Not start ever has been moving behind the passing of Archie Manning. Right now, the NFC's leading quarterback in his counterpart today for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw, out of Louisiana Tech. He is the AFC's number one quarterback. They're set to hook up today at Three Rivers Stadium. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer, who invite you to see and test drive the all-new LTD and Mustang. Light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Firestone, makers of the new steel-belted Radio 721. Ask a friend about Firestone. It is an unusually warm November day in Pittsburgh as the Saints and the Steelers are set to meet up. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Cricky. This is Hank Strand. Hank, how about the Steelers' defense? How do you attack it? It might be the best in football. Well, I think one thing that you have to do, they play a double zone, which means they double the outside the receivers with uh, two people, and they let the tight end go, expecting one-for-one -one coverage with a linebacker. And so I don't think they can do that with Henry Childs. He's too good a receiver, and that could be a problem for them. What about the Pittsburgh Steelers now? How would you assess them in comparison to the Super Bowl championship team? Are they as good? Uh, I think they're a little bit better overall, uh, especially offensively, but I really don't think they're as good defensively. That's going to be interesting to see. The Saints coming off a couple of big wins, and right now we have our official breakdown. Jerry Mark Bright is our referee. There is his crew. As the temperature is about 70 degrees at kickoff time, and Roy Girella has the ball teed up for the Steelers and is ready to kick it off to the New Orleans Saints. The deep man for the Saints is going to be Wes Chandler, number 89, the rookie out of Florida, the number one draft choice of the Saints, and one of the highest regarded players to come out of the last college draft. Here is Chandler moving up on the ball, gets a running start at the three-yard line. He's across the 15. And Chandler is hit hard at the 19-yard line. Rick Moser, a running back, 39, came down to hit him. There is the Saints backfield, Manning at quarterback, Muncie and Galbraith as setbacks. The pass catchers, Tinker Owen, Dyke Harris, and Henry Childs. The interior line has been hurt, but they've been staying together. The starting guards went out in one game against the Eagles. And the New Orleans Saints right now have somewhat of a makeshift offensive line that has done a good job in the recent weeks. So the Saints break the huddle, and they will go first and 10 from just inside their 20-yard line. Opening play from scrimmage. Harris goes in motion. Manning play fake, and he looks it down the middle. He's got Tinker Owens wide open for a first down to the 38-yard line. So, Hank, the Saints come out firing and hit the big one early. This is what they do very well. That time they were in a slot left formation with Tinker Owens and Ike Harris on the left side. They sent him in motion, a play-action fake, and then he threw downfield to Tinker Owens, who was wide open. Mel Blount, number 47, gave him a lot of room. And, it, you know, interestingly enough, um, uh, Don, that time I think they're going to use a lot of slot because that way they can eliminate the double coverage by the outside receivers and uh, should be more effective. The Steelers come into the game with the best record in football this year. They're 8-1. and one. The Saints 5-4, and four, and here is Galbraith running off the right side, hits across the 40 and out to the 42, got close to four yards. As we look down the Pittsburgh Steelers front four, Greenwood, Green, Banaszak, and White. The linebackers, two consensus all pros in Jack Ham and Jack Lambert, Lauren Taves, a good outside linebacker at the right side. A rookie, Ron Johnson's at one corner, all pro Mel Blunt is the other. Shell and Wagner, the deep backs in the secondary. So there was a gain of three yards in the last play. It's going to be second down and seven out for New Orleans. Opening series of downs. No score on the board. First quarter, Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Saints and White. Manning takes a look, broken play, and Archie Manning with no one to hand the ball off to had to eat the ball and take a loss. L.C. Greenwood is having one of his very best seasons for the Steelers. Was there to make the play on and force him down. That gives you a little bit something different to shoot at here, Hank, as they have to go to the long yardage play on third down. You don't like to do that against the defense like the Steelers. No, that's what they like to be. They like to be in a situation where they can rush the passer, and uh, this is exactly what situation they're in right now. Third and long for the Saints. Ball is at the 40. They're in bump and run coverage, and they want to go up on top. I'm sure they're changing the play in the line of scrimmage, and there they do go on top. Manning lets him fly along on a timing pattern, tried to hit Tinker Owens, front of the deep pattern off the right flank. And so it goes incomplete, and fourth down comes up for the Saints and Hunter Tom Blanchard's out. You know, Don, they're very deceptive. Uh, Pittsburgh is with that double cover. That time they looked like they were going to be in bump and run coverage with the cornerbacks right up on the receivers, and then the deep safeties 
they run to the outside zones to double cover those people and as a result you've got to get the ball in between or sometimes if you think it's going to be a long one why the safety man can intercept it that time of course they covered it well and Archie threw it long and incomplete dealers come with a big rush they went for the block Blanchard hits the ball very well and Theo Bell lets it hop into the end zone it'll come out on a touch back to the 20 dealers had 11 to 10 men on the line of scrimmage and they were going after Blanchard but he got away a good punch and so now Pittsburgh will take over the football for the first time in the game at their 20-yard line. So we are early in the first quarter. There is no score on the board. The Pittsburgh Steelers with the highest scoring offense in football set to go out. I'm John Kelly, a tire engineer. And this is the Firestone 721 radio. A tire we have so much confidence in, we're backing every 721 sold for the rest of this year with this guarantee. If a Firestone 721 becomes unserviceable within two years because of defects in workmanship or materials, we'll replace it free. Only road hazard and in-service abuse are excluded. The Firestone 721, we're so confident we guarantee them for two full years. Introducing a new American road car. The all-new Ford LTD for 79, with more front seat room, more rear seat room, more window area, and more handling ease than last year's LTD. Plus the power of a V8 engine standard, a road car to take you across town or across the country. This land is your land, this land is my land. To test drive the all-new LTD on your own roads, see your Ford dealer today. Here come the Steelers, out on offense, first and ten for the first time in the game. Lynn Swan, the best pass catcher in football this year, is wide to the right. Equally dangerous deep, John Starworth on the left flank. And Bradshaw hands off and Rocky Blyer takes it up the middle and out to the 22 or 3 yard line. A pickup of three yards on the play, it's going to be second down and seven as the middle of the Saints defense was on the tackle. Alois Groom, Alex Price, Derlin Moore, and Joe Campbell across the defensive front. And they started with a counter play, which means that they're very concerned about the pursuit of the Saints. They try to slow it down, get Fetterspiel going one way, and came up behind it. I want to get in a little bit about this flex defense and get your opinions on that. As they go to Franco Harris, he's across the 25. The big back who needs 30 yards today to become the seventh player to gain 7,000 yards in his career. There's the backfield of the Steelers. Bradshaw having a superb year. Blyer and Harris as veteran setbacks. Stallworth, Swan, and Randy Grossman, the tight end. The offensive line, one of the very best. Colvin Penny, the tackles, Davis and Mullins, the guards, and Mike Webster at center. Some say he's the best in the league right now. 52 over the ball at center. Watch him. Third down and three for the Steelers. No score as Bradshaw takes a look. He's got a lot of time, and he's got a man open. Who's on Starworth. And Starworth isn't done yet till he's down to the 44-yard line of New Orleans. So the Steelers come up with a big gainer on third down. Hank? Yes, and he really got it in there. He's got a lot of RPMs in the ball. Of course, he's got a great arm. It was just a turn-in pattern to the inside. Look at it. He's coming right underneath Tom, Tommy Myers, 37, is in a good position uh, to make the interception, but he waited for the ball, didn't attack it, and as a result, Stallworth came right underneath him, 82, and made the first down. A great look and play by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Franco Harris rips it up the middle and gains almost nine yards right into the heart of the New Orleans defense. He runs the ball down to the 35-yard line. He's finally knocked down there by the free safety, Tom Myers. Here's Fettersfield. Yeah, watch Joe. He's got a stunt, and uh, the ball carrier ran behind the stunt. That was, uh, of course, uh, Harris and they make a nice gain on the play. Mike Webster did a great job of blocking on the play. The, the offensive center of the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 52. He took Fettersfield right out. Now on short yardage, the Steelers go right at the Saints again. They've got plenty for the first down, but there is a penalty marker down as Rocky Blyer takes the ball down inside the 30, but the call's going to go against Pittsburgh. Tom Myers is on the tackle again for New Orleans. Mike comes back. Franco Harris, as we mentioned, needing just 30 yards to gain 7,000. Now the ball is set back to the 45-yard line of New Orleans. And here is Jerry Mark Bright. Hold it. Number 52. Offense. Second down. 
they're a great trapping team, Don. They, they trap anybody or anything they can trap, anything that comes along the line of scrimmage. And sometimes, even if you don't come across, they're still going to trap you. They do that so well. They've been together. We've got great athletes in there, the Steelers. On second and 11, a swing pass goes out to Franco Harris. Webster's out in front. And Franco Harris thunders all the way down to the 30-yard line and gets the first down. A gain on the play of about 17 yards. Yeah, it was a well-executed play. Franco Harris waits, lets the linebackers get their drops. Terry throws the ball right over the top. Uh, Brown, number 27, gets an outside position, but not too aggressively. Franco Harris goes inside. Derlin Moore, 74, and uh, uh, number 27, finally come in and make the tackle, Ray Brown. Jim Merlo, Joe Fettersfield, Pat Hughes back to line. Chapman and Spencer in the corners. Brown admires the safety for New Orleans. First and ten Steelers, they drive on. This time, the Saints cut down the run. Franco Harris didn't get too far, did advance inside the 30. Fettersfield makes the hit, 58. Yep. Joe Fettersfield, the middle linebacker, 58, goes into the gap, is coming through there, reads the blocks very well, and stops uh, Franco Harris, number 32, right at the line of scrimmage. Great play by Joe Fettersfield, number 58. They talk about the flex defense where you really have people playing a little bit off the line. You got five guys who look like they might rush, but four come. You're not sure just which one is going to hold back. No, and if, if, I think basically you try to run at the people off the line of scrimmage and throw on first down because it's hard to get a pass rush from the flex when they're playing that soft. That time they ran right at the flex, and that's what the good teams are going to do. So Harris runs it right down and gets it inside the 20 for a first down. And there is the front four of the New Orleans Saints. Alois Grooms tackles Alex Price and Derlin Moore. Campbell at the one defensive end. Merlo, Fettersfield, and Hughes backing the line. And the four safeties, four deep backs for New Orleans. Chapman and Spencer at the corners. Brown and Myers the safeties. The Steelers moving the ball after their first possession. They took it over on their 20 on a touchback. And they go right back to Franco Harris. All day long behind this Webster. You know, the other thing that's very important against this uh, Pittsburgh team, the two times or three times I've seen them play, one thing you've got to do, you've got to be able to stop Franco Harris from a running standpoint because he's a tough, big, strong running back, and if you can't stop him, you're going to have a long, tough afternoon because he really makes things happen and really makes the spark fly. Right now, he's carried the ball four times for 30 yards. So we unofficially had him at 7,000 for his great career. 7,000 yards in seven seasons. This one a long way from over. Harris with over 700 yards on the year now. Right back to Franco Harris. And the big guy from Penn State melts the ball down to the 11-yard line to pick up a two and be third down and three. Here's the sign now that Franco Harris hit 7,000. Matt Hughes knocked him down. Standing ovation for Franco Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Boy, that's a lot of you. We're, a lot, we're out a lot of shoes running that far. Hey. Don, that's a great compliment to a terrifically outstanding running back. 6'4", 240. 58 career touchdowns, five this year. He's sixth on the all-time list of touchdowns. Yards start to get tougher now as New Orleans holds tight and against a third and three run. Ray Brown comes up to make the hit on Rocky Blyer. And Roy Jarrell is going to come out on fourth down. The Steelers are going to look for the short field goal rather than try to punch out the first down and fourth down. I'm surprised they ran that kind of a play on that kind of yardage situation. They brought Sid Thornton in on the wing back and uh, tried to run in that area, but they, it was a long way to run. And, uh, of course, they didn't succeed at making the first down. The defense of the Saints did a good job. Craig Colquitt will hold. And Roy Jarella with the ball down, drills it up. Plenty of distance, and he's got the point. So the Steelers go on the board first. Roy Jarella hits the field goal, and the Pittsburgh Steelers looking for their ninth win in ten games this season. Go up on the board with a 3-0 lead. everybody to the light beer battle of the big guys and there they are two teams locked in mortal combat to decide the eternal argument over light beer from miller 
On one side, the big guys who think the best thing about light is it tastes great. Yeah, it tastes great. It tastes great. On the other side, the big guys who think the best thing about light is it has a third less calories than their regular beer. It's less filling. Less filling. Less filling. I feel strongly both ways. I tell you, this is really no respect. Blue is the violet and red is the rose. You don't fool them or break your nose. The tension here is almost unbearable. Oh, you guys. They can't go on much longer. Something big has got to happen soon. Holy cow, look at that. Hi, Mickey. Hi, gals. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. I still don't know why they asked me to do this commercial. This Sunday on CAV. There's been an inmate takeover at your old prison. The prisoners have asked for you to be a go-between. We'll find out which side you're on. I'm one of you! This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. Rogerella, who hit a field goal for the first points of the game to give Pittsburgh a 3-0 lead, kicks off now. His kickoff goes out of bounds. Rich Marty lets it roll out. It'll be a five-yard assessment against Girella, so he sets his kicking tee back to the Pittsburgh Steelers 30. You know, that's what a, a return man like Chandler does. He kind of intimidates you from a kickoff standpoint. You wind up trying to kick the ball away from him and try to aim the ball. That time they try to aim it at Rich Marty, and it went out of bounds, and now, of course, they have to kick back from the 30-yard line. And so, he, as a result, he's a very effective weapon. You know what? West Chandler getting the ball, if you can help it, Green Bay. In Philadelphia, the Packers have just gone out in front 3-0 on a field goal by Chester Markall in the first period. What do you think of Green Bay, Hank? Very surprising. I saw them early in the season, and I have to admit that I really never dreamed they would be this far along from a record standpoint at this stage of the season. And it's really a great compliment to Bar Starr and his fine staff and his young team because they've really done a great job. Now after the penalty against the Steelers, kickoff going out of bounds. Jarella has it teed up, and there's Chandler going back. Getting set to go, the rookie from Florida. Credentials he came into pro football with. Boy, if you read a scouting report on him, it's like the guy's headed for Canton, Ohio in the Hall of Fame. You know, Clarence Chapman, you can't uh, take him too lightly nope. either. He's got great speed. And last year ran a 92-yard return for us against the 49ers, so he can go too. He's on the left flank. Now Jarella. It's a hopper downfield. It's going to be Chapman with the ball at the nine. He's got a problem. And the Steelers special teams are there. Theo Bell, 83, was down. And the Saints going off and stand just inside their 20. Well, the Pittsburgh team got off the hook there nicely because with the extra five yards, it should have been a great opportunity for a good return, but he kicked a, a knuckle knuckleball. And uh, as a result, it was difficult to field, and they didn't get much of a return at all on that, re on that play. Saints with their second possession. You'll recall the first time they had the ball, they hit the big gainer, the throw on the first down. Let's see what they come out against this Pittsburgh Steeler with now. Archie Manning at quarterback. Good Manning again, a broken play, and Archie Manning goes down with no gain. It looked like it should have been a trap play, and uh, it's the second time they've blown a play in the early stage of this game. It looked like the play was designed to go to Muncie and come back, but uh, Muncie was not there, and uh, evidently there was a mix-up on the play, which is obvious. Archie Manning did the next best thing to try to run the ball into the trapping area, but didn't succeed in making any yardage on the play. So Archie and the Saints now with second and long. Harris and Tinker Owens wide to either side. Hand up goes to Galbraith, and he gets the ball out across the 20. And the Saints Ellis had a misconnection there. Yes, it was a delayed play, a draw play, and the exchange, the mesh between the quarterback and the fullback was not too, too smooth. But overall, Manning having his finest season as a professional after nine games, he leads the NFC in passing, and a lot has to do with just plain good health. He's got that throwing arm back in peak form. Yes, this is the first time he's been in, in tip-top shape for a long time. And, of course, he's got the ability to be one of the great ones in the league. 
Tony Dungy is in as a fifth defensive back now for the Steelers on third down and five for New Orleans. They fake the blitz. They're running outside with, with Muncie this time. Chuck Muncie is knocked down by 58 Jack Lambert, the all-pro middle linebacker of the Steelers. Got the first down. Yes, it was a, a plain sweep uh, to the left side, and this is where people have really been running. Here's Muncie coming around the outside. He's got the ball in the wrong arm. Pressure from the inside does a good job of running, however, and gets the necessary yardage for the first down. A good, unpredictable call by Archie Manning. Donnie Shell, one of the safeties, finally made the tackle, but the Saints get the big play on third down. They keep the drive alive, keep the chain markers moving. First and ten. Probably going to roll out here on first down. Nope, play action pass. And he's got time, swings it out. Childs, the tight end, has the ball, but he also has a lot of hit Pittsburgh Steelers hit down him as soon as he catches it. He did gain yardage about four. Childs, that time, was a safety valve on the play, and it looked like he got out there just a little bit too quickly. Archie was looking downfield, and if nobody was open, why then, of course, he was going to go back to Henry Childs. By the time he got the ball to him, of course, he was covered pretty well and uh, just made a couple of yards on the play. Dick Nolan on the sideline. Three times he had divisional championship teams at San Francisco, and right now he has the Saints with their best record through nine games ever, five and four. They're up against a tough one today in the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were up against a tough one last week against the Giants team back to win. Henry Childs, and there's Chuck Muncie wide open. Beautiful throw by Manning. A perfect lead to running back Chuck Muncie and the big guy from California. Takes the ball on the dead run and brings it all the way down to the Steelers 35-yard line. And that's what they can do. Archie Manning, the great thing about Archie Manning, uh, Don, he, he can find the right guy, the guy who was open. That time you see him licking ham, number 58. Or Lambert, I should say, 58. And he gets the ball right on target. And it's a big play. Chuck Muncie making a fine catch and puts the ball in, in good scoring, in the good scoring area on about the 35-yard line. The connection good for a 32-yard gainer, and the Saints start them out of challenge now. Trailing 3 nothing in the first quarter, two and a half minutes to play in it. Dealers <laughs> lead 3 nothing. Saints moving the football. Pitch back goes to Muncie. And Muncie, who is, we're told, had a very good week of practice. He's had some nagging injuries, but his sound right now gets the ball down to the 30. He got almost five. Mike Wagner hit him. They're going to try to ball. I'm, run the ball, I'm sure, to the left. Uh, Banasek uh, on, the, on the right side, and, of course, the right, the right end, Dwight Wright, number 78. That's where they're going to try to do business, and uh, they did a good job in the last two times they ran the ball to that side. You do business against the Steelers anywhere you're fortunate enough to do it. Yeah, and you take whatever they give you, and that's what Archie did the last time. They gave him coverage on the, the halfback, and he took advantage of it for a nice big game. Chuck Muncy running well again as he weaves behind the interior line of the New Orleans Saints. Joe Green, the big guy from North Texas State, made the knockdown for Pittsburgh. There's the Chester Mark call field goal to put the Packers out in front of the, the Eagles, 3 0 in the first period at Philadelphia. Joe Green, mean Joe Green, now in his 10th year as a Pittsburgh Steeler, been voted the most valuable defensive player in the NFL. It's a good time for a play action pass right here, Don. Third and just over one for New Orleans. Nope. The don't give up the yardage. Let's see now, man, he's clapping. Apparently, he, I think gets, he, made the he first did down. get there on that second try. So Galbraith has been the Saints' best runner and their best pass catcher. 45 receptions coming into the game and 355 yards rushing. Gets the first down for New Orleans at the 25. And they continue to run to the left. And I'm sure when they throw the ball uh, a great deal, they'll, they'll try to throw to their left side, too, on Blount, if they can get him on one-for-run one coverage. And, of course, on Ron Johnson, the rookie on the left corner. Dale Blunt from Southern University in Baton Rouge playing with a badly bruised shoulder with some questions as to whether he'd start. Saints try the middle. Joe Green knocks it down. Saints going right at the Steeler defense that time, and Tony Galbraith doesn't get too much, so it's going to be second down now in about eight. That's one thing you have to do against Pittsburgh. You have to run inside so they can take a little sniff and keep them honest inside so that you can do a better job of running off tackle and outside. If you just let them run from side to side, they're really difficult to catch because they pursue so well. 
Great linebackers Lambert and Ham are all over the field before the Saints get the next playoff. The gun sounds, and that is the end of the first quarter. With the Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead and a Roy Joel a field goal, 3 0, but we come back to open the second quarter of play. The New Orleans Saints will be down close. You give a man a couple of days to himself and a Black & Decker workmate, and there's almost nothing he can't do. You can pound on it, saw on it, hammer on it, and sand on it. The sturdy vice jaws do the holding for you. You can clamp on it, paint on it, cut a shape on it, drive a screw on it. There's almost nothing you can't do. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Take any razor available in America. Now there's an electric shaver that will shave as close all your money back. The Remington XLR. Remington can guarantee a close shave because of our unique three-part system. The first head shaves close, the second closer. The exclusive intercept cutter is designed to shave longer hairs. The Remington XLR. It shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Available at over 1,300 Kmart stores across the USA. I'm Lynn Swan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I hope you'll do it the American way on Election Day. Go to the polls on Tuesday and vote for the candidate of your choice. With Hank Strand, this is Don Crickey back at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Ready now to open the second quarter of play. Saints with the ball, second down and nine coming up. Steelers in the lead, 3-0. Manning throwing very well in the first quarter. 3 of 4, he completed for 55 yards. And the Steelers have now gone 10 quarters, 10 first quarters this season without giving the opposition a touchdown. They've only permitted one field goal in 10 quarters. Opening quarter. First 15 minutes of the game, that defense is tough to score on. The Saints now starting to challenge. Manning takes a look. Timing pattern over the middle. It's intercepted by Jack Lambert. The middle linebacker, Jack Lambert. Despite those heavily taped hands, hooks out of the football. And the Saints drive is stopped. That's why he's such a great linebacker. Because when you get a chance to make an interception, you make it, and that's exactly what he did. That's his second of the season. This is the Kmart 672, Kmart's best car battery. Like another leading premium battery, the 672 is calcium lead constructed. Like one other premium battery, it's truly maintenance-free, completely sealed so you never add water. But the 672 has one other feature you'll find only in Kmart automotive products. The 672, Kmart's best battery, is Kmart priced. Inspector, I have the clues. You have the clues? Meet me in a silver Mercedes outside. Mercedes. 79 Ford Renata, an American classic, sometimes confused with a Mercedes. Inspector, where are you? Maybe in the car. And I'm in the car. You in the car? Are you sure you're in a Mercedes? Oh. One good way to tell Granada is by its sticker price. Ah, that's a Granada, you fool! Of oh, course, I can see that. Next Saturday at 4.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see Hugo Coro defend his world middleweight championship against Rodrigo Valdez. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Dick Nolan and his counterpart Chuck Noll on opposing sidelines as the Steelers have the ball back on a Jack Lambert interception. Here's Bradshaw taking a look and the rushes against him. He can go. They say he'd have made it in the league as a running back if he'd not been a great quarterback. Bradshaw going down hard, loses the ball. There might be a call against the Saints for a late hit. Henley Marker is down. You know, after all the years he's played, he still has the same daring and uh, the, the same excitement. Here we get the call. Unnecessary roughness. Looked like Don Reese, number 60. Well, it's moved out to the 42, and here's the call. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 58, defense, first down. Got Joe Federspiel on. Now let's watch the earlier interception by Lambert. Watch, he's, he's, it was double coverage on the other side, and the receiver was knocked down, coming to the inside, and as a result, 
Lambert was wide open, made the interception. So the Steelers with a 3 0 lead the second quarter move on. Here's a pitch back as Franco Harris looks to the outside. He's hemmed in, and the Saints are going to knock him down for a substantial loss on the play. The strong safety, Ray Brown, 27, came up along with outside linebacker Jim Merlo, yeah. number 57. Good reaction on the part of the defense and an outside play. Watch Fetterspiel, 58 coming over, good pursuit angles. Jim Merlo making penetration along, across the line of scrimmage. Ray Brown, number 27, along with Jim Merlo, number 57, do a good job of gang tackling and knocking down Franco Harris at second and 16. So Terry Bradshaw and the Steelers come out of the huddle now with Swan and Starworth very much factors in the upcoming play, second and 16. Bradshaw looks, swings it out, deep men are covered, he goes to Franco Harris. But the Duke step on, Franco Harris got back to lost yardage on his previous run, advances the ball back to the 42. It's going to be third down and 10. Pat Hughes hit him. The linebackers, he's waiting for the linebackers to get depth. Franco Harris comes out to the left side, watching the linebackers and defensive backs get depth. He makes the catch and is tackled in the open field by Pat Hughes, who is in a good tackling position and makes a fine tackle near the sideline. Pat Hughes, now in his ninth year out of Boston University, originally a New York Giant. Played good football since coming to the Saints. Third year at New Orleans as Bradshaw sets his team up on third and ten. He's got time. He's got a home run ball out there. But way too much on it for Lynn Swan. As he had the defense beaten, but the ball was way long. You get a feeling, Hank, that Bradshaw could throw it out of the arena if he had it. Oh, he's a real muscle man. And he ought to really be a strong man at the circus. He's, he's that big and strong. And he throws that football just like a baseball, but he threw it a little bit too long that time. The Lynn Swan. I think he still holds the National High School javelin throw record, national record. And of course, Manning is counterpart with New Orleans, one of the highest regarded Major League Baseball prospects as a shortstop at Ole Miss. Well, they're both great athletes. They are. Cole quit, a rookie from Tennessee, angles his punt. Looks like he did a pretty good job with it. That's outside the 20. Coming out to the 30. But here again, that's what a guy like Chandler does back there. Sometimes you wonder why he hasn't done more returning-wise, but a lot of times, if they try to kick it out of bounds and do so, it's just very effective. Hasn't been much in the news lately about the Korean influence scandal. Maybe because there wasn't much to it, but maybe there was. I mean, they talked a lot about how to get Koreans to testify under oath, but it takes two to make a bribe. Why didn't they get the congressman to testify under oath? And in public, like with Watergate, and not just the scapegoats, but the big guys, too. It seems perfectly clear that the Democratic leadership in Congress didn't want us to hear the whole story. We need some new leadership. The only way that's going to happen is by electing a Republican Congress. Thanks for the tour, fellas. Man, it's dark and dirty down in that mine. But Ken here drives home in the cleanest car you ever saw. And every time he fills it up with gas, he has an easy pouring bottle of STP gas treatment. Because it gets in there and helps keep that carburetor clean. And that's the way this young man wants it. I take good care of what works hard for me. So for my car, it's STP. Before we rent you a GM car in National, it gets checked out by the big green team. Willoughby! This old cupboard. Oh, top condition, coach. I checked all ten items on the maintenance checklist. Uh huh. Spare tire? Wiper? Horn! Then, after we check our cars, we check our checkers. And did you sign the list? Coach. Just checky, Willoughby. Just checky. Back and set to go on a really lovely day here in Pittsburgh for November. Temperature almost 70 degrees, clear and sunny skies. Archie Manning with his team down 3-0. Thinks it's their third possession of the game. They've moved the ball twice, but have not been able to get in. L.C. Greenwood leaves early, but we'll see if the tackle, Robert Woods, drew him off. I don't think he did. I think that it's on Pittsburgh. Yep. Hollywood bags Greenwood, they call him. The ball's advanced out in the five-yard assessment against the Steelers to the 35-yard line. Encroachment, number 68, defense, first down. Archie does a good job of changing the inflection in his voice and the rhythm and the cadence, and as a result, that's what makes a defensive player jump offside, and it's a nice way and an easy way to pick up five. Here 
old friend Lenny Dawson was pretty good at that too. Oh, uh, he was a master at that. Yes, he was. Pitch back goes to Muncie. Good block, and Muncie gets the ball out on a first and five carry to the 39 yard line. It'll bring up second and one. Lauren Page, outside linebacker number 51 out of California, was the man who made the knockdown. You know, people don't realize how big and strong Chuck Muncie is. He's 6'3 and about 235, and he runs a 40 and 4'5. Oh, and uh, he's just a tremendous athlete, and That's when he's illegal. totally healthy, yep. And uh, when he's healthy, he can really go. It is now second and less than one for New Orleans. Galbraith hits ahead. He's got a first down. The ball's out just across the 40. L.C. Greenwood and Jack Lambert made the stop. Galbraith comes into the game averaging 3.3 yards a rush. A durable back. The Saints came into this game with 554 yards or 554 plays on offense this season. Tony Galbraith handled the ball either running it or passing it for a third of them. I don't know where there's a better fullback in the National Football Conference than Tony Galbraith. Overall, runner, pass receiver, blocker, he does it all. And along with it, he's got a great attitude and a great pushing. Galbraith is the up back now on the eye set. Muncie is the deep back. They've got to throw some on first down. <laughs> Right up the middle, and Galbraith powering his way gets ahead for about six yards before Joe Green knocks him down. I didn't realize, Hank, that Muncy's as big as you said, he's 235. Oh, oh yeah, he is. Now, th this, this is a good blocking at the point of attack. Dave Lafari, John Hill, number 62, and Fred Sturt, uh, number 68, all of whom do a great job of blowing him off the line of scrimmage and providing Tony with running room, whereby he was able to get six yards on the play. Great job up front by the same offensive line. You know, they talk a lot about the injured players, and they were fine, but these young players who are playing now are all experienced players who've been in the league for several years, and they're really doing a good job. Hard hit. Lambert puts down Chuck Muncy. And Muncy is knocked down for little or no gain at about the 48-yard line of New Orleans. Game moving right along. We're in the second quarter, 11.35 to play in the half. Steelers lead it 3-0. Their first possession, they went from their own 20 down close. Jarella kicked a point-blank field goal. That's the only scoring we have so far. 3-0 Pittsburgh. Interesting quote from Chuck Noel. Somebody said, do you think your team might be looking past New Orleans and towards the Rams, who the Steelers play next week? Noel said, hey, the Saints went out to Los Angeles and beat the Rams. They're going to run this way, it looks like. Let's see if they do with the back tilted this way. Don, yep. Here's Chuck Muncy coming straight ahead. Gets the ball to midfield. But in third down, it looks like he might be just short of the first down. Yeah, I don't think he made it. And that time, they really tipped the play uh, by the alignment of uh, Tony Galbraith. He was way up ahead of Chuck Muncie, which indicated they were going to run to the right. And I don't think they made the first down. So you don't want to gamble on fourth down at midfield against Pittsburgh. You've got to play percentages. And percentages are Tom Blanchard to punt it. Rudershan drops back deep now for Pittsburgh, along with Theo Bell. Hey, one thing, Pittsburgh has got athletes from spot number one on the roster right through 45. He's got to be some kind of a football player to make this team. You better have a lot of talent, a lot of, a lot of skill and ability. After a 60-yard first punt, Blanchard doesn't hit this one nearly as well. There is also a penalty marker down. You know, I'm surprised that he tried to kick the ball to his right that time. Normally, you're much better to kick it to your left because, again, if you kick a bad one off the side of your foot, it goes down the middle of the field, and you've got a chance for a fine punt. If you kick it to the right and it slips off like I did there, you've got a bad kick. Aha. Uh -huh. That's something. That'll give New Orleans a first down. Hank, you're always the coach. I see you got your hang time watch right here. Yeah, we just wanted to double check it. Let's see what this penalty is now. It's going to be an assessment against the Steelers. It came on a fourth and less than a yard, so the five-yard markoff gives the Saints a first down. Here he is. Let's see what he calls. Illegal cutting foul, number 39, defense, automatic first down. Rick Moser with an illegal block. So the Saints get a break, keep their drive alive. Chain markers move. They have a first down at the Pittsburgh 45-yard line. The interior line for New Orleans, J.T. Taylor at one tackle, Robert Woods is the other. 
Red Skirt and Dave Lafari are the guards, and John Hill, the center, as Archie Manning brings his club out. Let's see if he throws the ball on first down here. He hasn't gone to Mike Harris yet. A very good pass catcher is wide and right against the rookie cornerback, Ron Johnson. There it is. He's got it. Muncy's wide open on a play action pass. Well, he thunders on the Oh, he can really run. Oh, he's, he's really a lightning. Uh, and a you know big and strong and and very few people in the league who had that kind of size had that kind of speed. Well, when you point out a four five forty, now that is a nebulous term to people who aren't involved in football, that's, but that's what cornerback speed. That's without somebody chasing him. With somebody chasing him, I guarantee he runs <laughs> faster than that. There's a play action pass. He's wide open in the flat. Yeah, one of the other things about Chuck Muncie is the fact that he wears glasses. He and Joe Lavender and two others, but not too many. Really seeing the ball very well today. He's got two. One, the first one's good for 32 yards. That's for another first down. Manning looks. And a marker goes down as Galbraith tries a one-hand stab at the football. Marker down at the line of scrimmage. Lambert was covering on the play. Going to go against the Saints. This one might have a hold. Looks like a holding penalty. So the markoff is going to be against New Orleans. We have 9.28 left to play in the first half. 3 0 Pittsburgh. Now, looking at some scores, Green Bay continues to lead the Philadelphia Eagles 3 0 after one period of play. St. Louis has gone in front of the New York Giants 7 0 at St. Louis. Atlanta leading San Francisco in the second quarter 7 to 3. Holding number 68, offense, first down. Red Sturt. Saints have really had some tough breaks in the offensive line. Two starting guards, Conrad Dobler and Emmanuel Zanders, are out for the season, as is the starting tackle, John Watson. They've had five offensive linemen go on injured reserve. First and 20 now for Archie Manning and the Saints, a tough call against a great defense. Manning lofts it. He's got Ike Harris open for a first down. They really did block well for Archie Manning on that one, and he delivered. He's got plenty of time to throw the ball, and here again, if Archie's got the time, he's going to find the right guy. Here you see him, good protection, throws outside right on the money to Ike Harris, who makes an inside-outside move, and he's wide open. Here we see the same shot again, good protection. That's the vital thing. He's got plenty of time to throw the ball and throws it right on the money. He goes into the post and back out to the outside, licking the double zone with a safety man playing deep outside, first and 10, Saints. You CBS cameraman don't miss a thing. Two good angles on a great play for New Orleans. Here's a handoff going straight ahead to Galbraith, and he is down inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line, so the Saints are very definitely in field goal range, but they have more downs to work with now as they have second coming up. On a tackle, L.C. Greenwood and Joe Green. You mentioned at the outset, Hank, you don't feel that the Steelers might be as strong defensively as those Super Bowl championship teams. Yeah, I, I know they're not. They're definitely not as strong as they were, but they, uh, they're they dominating teams offensively, which they didn't do at that time, and uh, as a result, they got a little bit more overall balance, but they're not as good defensively. Archie Manning now 5 for 7 throwing the ball for 90 yards. They got bump and run. Let's see if he tries to go up on top. There he is. Mike Harris has the ball inside the pen. He's down to the five. It's a first and goal for New Orleans at the Pittsburgh five-yard line. That time it was the delay pattern. They were in double coverage. Ike Harris looked like he was going up, then came underneath to the inside, was wide open, makes the fine reception, and is finally tackled there by Mel Blunt, number 47. Here's a, another shot of it. The key, again, is the fine protection. Dave Lafare, 64, and John Hill, 62, came off of one block, got another. Ike Hill goes underneath the coverage and is wide open, and uh, the Saints have the ball on the five-yard line. And we've got a good one going here at Three Rivers Stadium as the Steelers lead 3-0, but the Saints are now challenging. See if they run to the left. He got it, and here comes Chuck Muncy, and the Steelers are there to meet him. Lambert. Coming up to make a hard hit along with Donnie Shell, the free safety. A lot of teams have been running left and very successfully. I'm sure that the Pittsburgh team is aware of that. They probably anticipate the fact that they're going to run that side and maybe we're a little bit better prepared to stop that play, but it was very obvious that the Saints were going to run to the left side on that left last play. So now, with the ball at the five, it is second and goal, New Orleans. 
6.45 left to play in the first half. Clock running. Steelers lead 3-0. Play action pass rollout. Manning has a man. Whips it. Touchdown New Orleans. Rich Marty, the young man from Penn State, comes in on offense and scores a touchdown at a place he loves to score him right here in Pennsylvania. Rollout pass to the right. Faking to Chuck Muncie. Throwing the pass in the corner. A, a, a right pattern an outside move by rich marty number 84 and this is what archie manning does as well right. as anybody in pro football uh he doesn't do it very often but he does it extremely well look at that that gets it right on the mark and of course rich marty reaches a little bit behind makes a great catch and the saints go ahead six to three lining up for the extra point manning throwing the ball beautifully watching him before the game he was working on that very play they just scored the touchdown on time and time again throwing on the rollout now, Mickemeyer with the point after, and he got out of that one, kicked it right up into the stands, and so, with 6.36 to play in the first half, the Saints have come from behind. They now lead the game 7-3. Energy for a stronger America. It starts here on the North Slope, the incredible 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline. Now that it's completed, the oil it carries will reduce the payments America makes for foreign oil by billions of dollars each year. And each tanker of North Slope oil leaving Valdez Harbor carries a vital new source of energy for a strong America. Wendy's presents Hot and Juicy Hamburgers. had a dry, chewy hamburger, you're gonna love Wendy's Hot and Juicy Hamburgers. Wendy's Hot and Juicy Hamburgers. Juicy meat, juicy toppings, and lots of napkins. Back at Free River Stadium in Pittsburgh, Mick and I are ready to kick it off now for New Orleans. They've had a parade of place kickers because of the injury to Richie Zaro. And back deep now for the Pittsburgh Steelers is Larry Anderson, a rookie. Uh, the Steelers are very impressed with him. He has the football now. He's going to get some room to operate. He's across the 20, across the 25. He's to the 30. He's to the 35. And Larry Anderson gets it all the way out to the 38-yard line. A short kickoff. And Steve Mickemeyer, the man who kicked it off short, came up to make the final tackle. Normally, he's been kicking the ball very long. He's got a good, strong leg. Uh, that time, he uh, kicked a kind of a chip shot. And a good return that time to about the 38-yard line. So now the Steelers go on offense, trailing New Orleans in the second quarter, 7-3. This is Don Cricky with Hank Stram, Free River Stadium, Pittsburgh, 6.26 to play in the first half. 7-3, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, first and 10. Steve Blyer, the former Notre Dame captain, runs straight ahead, and he gets the ball out to the 43-yard line. Don Reese, number 60 on the stop for New Orleans. That time, there was a trap play uh, up the middle, and they picked up a nice chunky yardage on first and 10. And this is what they like to do. They, have a, they are a trapping personality, and when you talk about a trap, you talk about a play where you let the defensive people come across the line of scrimmage like they're not going to get blocked and then blocked from the inside out. The Steelers are number one in the AFC in scoring points, 229 coming into the game. They've only managed three so far as they go to Blyer for a first down. Now they start to pound it out against New Orleans, running behind John Kolb and Sam Davis. This time they run right up the middle. There's Fetterspiel, and there's a fine block right at the point of, the ta uh, of attack by uh, their right guard, G uh, Jerry Mullins, and uh, Rocky Blyer force through there for the necessary yards in the first half. And this Webster, we can't say enough about the offensive center for Pittsburgh. The guy's great. Put he's somebody on the floor every game. Every yeah, play. he's not a big guy either. No, he's not. not. He's about 6'1". Great leverage. He is something. They, they rave about him here, and if you watch him, it's difficult to always watch the offense. Look at him just blow the guy right off the play. That's where the play went, right off of Webster's block. He's quick. Oh, he's got great leverage and uh, gets into people very quickly. It's what really what, a cross block. He's got to block the defensive left tackle, who is Alex Price. And then the right guard, Mullins, traps the defensive right tackle. And uh, they go pouring through there and hit another big game. Second and short, they might try a play-action pass or something big on this short yardage situation. Webster's down his fifth year out of Wisconsin. 
He's a fourth round draft choice, 1974. They've got an off throw there. Here is Flyer again going up the middle. He gets the first down, but a penalty marker is fired in from the back judge. Safety's around the tackle. They got uh, Pittsburgh on a hole. Somebody saw that as quite a blatant hole because that penalty marker was thrown in with authority. Yes, and it looked like the reaction, just the response. I don't know whether he was the one involved, but Mullins, 72, uh, reacted to the play. Let's see what they call. The illegal use of the hands, number 52, offense, second down. Mike Webster. The yeah, they got Webster on that one. Yep. So now the ball is set back to the Pittsburgh 49-yard line. It's going to be second down and 11 for the Steelers. They trail New Orleans in the second quarter, 7-3. to three. Bradshaw has been going to the run, and he goes right back to Rocky Blyer as the state linebackers are keying on Franco Harris, and Blyer getting consecutive calls now, four plays, and he gets inside the 45. Webster that time blocked Derlin Moore. Derlin gets a piece of him, but he right, runs right through his arms. Fetterspiel gets a, a piece of him, too, and finally slides down to the ankle. Jim Merlo and uh, Ray Brown, 27 and 57, respectively, finally help on the tackle. Third and four. Bradshaw has not been connecting to those wide receivers. He got Starworth once early, but you know he's going to be going to be before long. It's third down and four now for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw takes a look. Rocky right. Flyers wide open. Is he ever? And Rocky Blyer with the reception at the sink 36 yard line dives inside the 35 to the 34. Pat Hughes tackles him. The Steelers drive on. You know, the great thing about both of these backs, watch Bradshaw back in the pocket. Blyer is in the flat area. He spots him, makes a fine catch, and watch him run through a tackle. Petterspiel comes over and slows him down a little bit, but he has really kind of overran the play, and Blocker, uh, Blyer made the first down. So with the Saints leading 7-3 in the second quarter, the Steelers take a look at the pass again. Timing pattern in the flat for the Starward. Free football. And New Orleans might have it. Let's see if he was inbounds. And he, the Saints have the ball. It, it is a fumble recovery. Starward losing the ball. It hops right up in the air. We couldn't tell whether or not the man was inbounds when he made the recovery. It was, and so Ray Brown gets the football. Tommy Myers is credited with the fumble recovery. To every secretary, whoever asked why centering a line can't be automatic, and why setting up columns, and indenting, and underlining, and erasing too, can't be automatic. To all those secretaries, IBM says, wait till you get your hands on this. The new IBM electronic typewriter. So automatic that while you fold the letter, it types the envelope. Now that's automatic. a whole new breed of Mustang. The all-new 79 Mustang from Ford. With a new aerodynamic design, precise handling, and Mustang performance from options of V6, V8, even a turbocharged engine. Mustang for 79, the new breed in two-door and three-door models. Capture one at your Ford dealer now. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, see NFL doubleheader action. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. There you see Stalber, Stalwart making the catch. Marie Spencer, 29, getting a piece, knocks the ball loose. And here you see Tommy Myers picking it up on the first bounce, maintains possession, and uh, Saints have the ball at this part of the field, first and ten. So the replay camera angle shows very distinctly the ball was inbounds when Myers made the recovery. Saints going offense. Our producer today is Bob Rowe, our director Jim Silman here at Three Rivers Stadium with the Saints in the lead seven to three in the second quarter. Manning directs the team first and ten. Mike Strawn is in at halfback and Wes Chandler is in at the other split end uh, position at this stage of the game. Jack Lambert ran through the interference, knocked down Tony Galbraith. But so there's a loss on the play back to the 30-yard line. It's going to be second down at about 14 for New Orleans. It was kind of a delayed counter play, and uh, it's a play that's very difficult to run against this team because they react so well. 
Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern time, it's the CBS Sports Spectacular, including live coverage from Buenos Aires, Hugo Coral, the reigning world middleweight champion defending his title against Rodrigo Valdez. And now the Saints go second and 14. Manning swings it out. Strawn has the ball, and he thunders ahead across the 40. A penalty marker is down as he gets to the 42. Could be a clip against New Orleans. In addition to that live coverage of the World Middleweight Championship fight, you'll see live coverage from Aqueduct Racetrack of the Stuyvesant Handicap. This is going to be the last race for the great Seattle Slough. That's next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific here on CBS. Here's the call. Pass interference. Oh, -ho. defense decline. First down. Mel Blunt, number 47. How can they decline and get a first down? It didn't get far enough for first down. We better talk this over. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing right now. They're talking it over to make sure they express that correctly. An automatic first down at the point of infraction. Here we go. Interference ball, 47 accepted. First down. There we go. Okay, we're all on the same page now. First and 10, New Orleans. And the Saints lead 7-3. Again, Wes Chandler is in at the split-in position. And uh, Mike Strong, number 33, who made that nice run after the reception from Archie Manning on a delayed uh, uh, flare pattern, are in the game at this stage. This is the first time the Saints have ever played at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Last time they were in Pittsburgh to play the Steelers, it was Pitt Stadium. <laughs> That's a rip. Icaris, he makes the reception at the 38. Another perfectly thrown ball by Archie Manning as Icaris on little cat's feet tiptoes inbound. You know, the nice thing, they're double covering the outside receiver, but the strong safety is taking a lot of time to get back deep outside, and they're cutting in front of the strong safety, and he's wide open. There you see him, wide open between the short man and the deep one, and it's a very fine pattern by Icaris and an excellent throw by Archie Manning. Another big gainer as the Saints get a first down and a long throw from Archie Manning, who has been absolutely superb quarterbacking the Saints today. His throwing has never been better. And now the Saints move on, leading 7-3 in the second quarter, first and 10. Draw play. Here comes Strong. He got yardage down close to the 34-yard line, a pickup of close to five. Manning is now 8 for 10, throwing the ball for 130 yards as we get the two-minute warning. Jack Lambert and Shell were on the tackle, so the Saints, with a big throw for Manning, keep their drive alive as they lead the game 7-3. to three. They'll be back. We all will in just a moment. My old buddy Jim was a great umpire. He was quick on his feet. He's got eyes like an eagle. I'm still quick because I don't get filled up. I drink light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's less filling. It's got a, what's it say? Here you go, Jim, try those. Oh yeah, a third less calories than a regular beer. Hey, you're Boog Powell. Hey. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Introducing the new Ford Pinto for 79. A new design for a little American workhorse. New up here, new back here. New in here, and a parade of new design Pintos to choose from. The new Pinto ESS, a new cruising wagon, a new Pinto Squire, a new cruising sedan, and a new Pinto wagon. So join the band. Well, and, and uh, I'm sure they'll continue to throw the football because they're doing that very successfully. He's getting plenty of time to throw the ball, and what they're doing there with their double coverage is they're slow covering the outside, and Harris is in wide open underneath the safety net. He did have the one bad ball. That was the one Lambert picked up. Yes, but the receiver was knocked down on the play. Here's Strong going to the left side. They continue to run left. That time he picked up a little yardage, but not very much, and they responded pretty well to that sweep. Percentage-wise, Hank, as you're well aware, most teams run to the right the majority of the time. Why is that? I think it's just a natural tendency that most teams are right-handed. People on the team are right-handed, quarterback-handed. And if you're not careful, if you don't scout yourself very carefully, you have a very strong overemphasis to the right side. you got to keep it balanced. Third down and just over four. 
four. Manning takes a look. It is caught for a first down. Henry Childs, the tight end, turns in front of the defense, in front of the linebackers who are covering him on the deep zone drop they took. Lauren Hayes and Jack Lambert knock him down, but it's a first down Saints. So another big third down play by Archie Manning. Another completion. He is now 9 for 11, and the Saints drive continues. We'll be back with it in a moment. What comes out of a loudspeaker is only as impressive as what goes into it. Pioneer's HPM speakers have a unique super tweeter that breathes to produce incredible highs. Its driver delivers remarkably crisp mid-range. Its bass you not only hear, but feel. So instead of sounding great on part of the music, HPM speakers sound great on all of it. Pioneer, we bring it back alive. Here they come, pouring in from California and Vermont, from Texas, Oklahoma, and Georgia, from all over the country, billions of used aluminum cans headed for recycling. Today, about one out of four aluminum cans is recycled and used again. Tomorrow, maybe one out of three. Someday, maybe every one of them. We can't wait, we can't wait for Next Saturday at 4.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see Hugo Toro defend his world middleweight championship against Rodrigo Valdez. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. The New Orleans Saints off to their best start ever as a football team. And off to a good start in this game against the Steelers. Pittsburgh scored three points the first time they had the ball, but New Orleans has come back to take the lead. 7 to 3. See if they continue to throw the ball. I surely would the way they're throwing it as successfully as they are with the protection they have. Manning is 9 for 11. They go the draw, and Galbraith crashes in. 15 yard line. He's got a first down. You know, the way they're moving the football, the draw, the trap, the screen, and the passing should be very, very good. Here's a, here's a draw play right up the middle with Tony Galbraith. He's got very happy feet, Don. He really moves well. Try to tackle in the open field. Well, they spot the ball down. It's going to make it second and not second and one. It's actually just a yard short. They go back to the run, and Galbraith does get the first down this time, advancing it down to the ten yard line. So the Saints use one of their three allotted timeouts. They stop the clock with 49 seconds left to play in the first half, and New Orleans is challenging again, leading the game seven to three. So we'll be back in a moment as the Saints are giving the Pittsburgh Steelers' vaunted defense all it can handle. Imagine if someone invented a wonderful box and gave you a way to catch little pieces of your life so that you could see them again anytime by just dropping them into the box. Now, now, wouldn't that be something? Well, it is something. Polar Vision, Polaroid's instant movie. Seconds after you shoot, you've got it. And you'll still have it even when certain persons go off to college. having a problem? Yeah. Did I forget my press stone? Yeah. Take out the old man, put in the tube, put in the press stone, press stone tube. Protect against freeze-ups and corrosion. Take out old, weak antifreeze and put in America's most trusted antifreeze, press stone tube. Take out the old man, put in the tube, put in the press stone, press stone tube. And when you flush your cooling system, use press stone super flush. Coming to this game, Archie Manning had the lowest interception rate of any quarterback in the National Football League. He threw one today, but he still has the lowest interception rate. He's having a superior day, though, throwing the ball. 9 for 11, passing it for 160 yards. Dennis Winston comes in as another linebacker. Joe Green goes out. They have three down linemen. Bump and run. See if he goes on top. No, it's a sweep. One one eight. Eight. Excellent tackle again by Jack Lambert. Jack Ham on this thing. Number 59, but Lambert crashes across also. It's a, it's a kind of a counter play. Sturt, number 68, is pulling on the play and pulling a little bit too slowly. And there we see great penetration by Jack Ham. Time very much a factor now. The clock is running. 21 seconds to play in the first half. Manning a timing pattern into the end zone. He was trying to get the ball in there. Broken up by Mel Blunt. You know, that kind of a play when they're in bump and run. They were in that defense the first time. 
and I thought he would try to go to it on first down, but he didn't. They gave it to him again. He goes to an automatic. They try to go over the top, but the great thing about the defensive back, Blunt, he's so tall, 47, that it's hard to get the ball over the top of him. He's the same size as Ike Harris, and as a result, they didn't succeed in making that connection. They are the same size. They're both 6'3". Actually, Blunt's a little bigger. He's 6'3". Yeah. They list him at 205, but he weighs about 218 pounds. West Chandler is still in at the split-in position. Harris on the left side. And Muncie is back in the game at halfback. West Chandler matches on against the Steelers' number one draft choice. Another run, bump and run again. Same situation. Chandler, way up in the air, did not get there. Ron Johnson... He really had a chance to make that catch. Ron Johnson was a little confused on the play, turned the wrong way. Chandler can get up in the air, though, can he? He's yes, he can. Watch him now. Look at so He got him fade, but he out jumps him. And really, he's got a chance to make that catch. He should have made the catch, very frankly. And uh, it falls incomplete. But there again, it was bump and run, and that's something that you like to do against that defense. You throw the ball over the top. Penley on the play, evidently. Encroachment foul, number 75, defense. Third down. Well, that advances the ball five yards in the end zone. You see how much a factor time is now. That's the only seconds remaining in the second quarter. Twelve seconds. So the Saints will go from scrimmage one more time. And send out the field goal unit if the pass is incomplete. Or will they throw a draw run at the Steelers? Up and run again. A draw play would be a good call here because the middle looks like it's really wide open. Let's see what they do. Oh, he's thrown again. This time underneath. Combo. Steelers have the ball. The Saints drive is stopped. The Steelers get the ball. Joe Green gets up and spikes it down with four seconds left. The Saints threat is stopped on a fumble recovery by Joe Green, and there's a Saint down on the field. He's getting up. That time there was a little indecision, seemingly, on where he wanted to throw the football. And uh, by the time he by the time he got rid of it, here he is. He's trying to bump and run again. This time they try to go underneath the coverage, and uh, Blunt played it very, very well. But you see Archie's arm, they, they tugged on it from the right side that time. And uh, as a result, Hayes, number 51, was the guy who made the play on that last uh, fumble by the New Orleans Saints. Joe Green credited with the recovery, and so Harry Bradshaw elects to run the clock out, and they'll all head to the locker room with the Saints winners of the first half of this game, 7-3. And very nearly had a 14 to 3 lead going in as two close connections were just missed in the end zone and then subsequently the fumble that cost the Saints possession they got no field goal drive but overall they moved the ball very well Hank and threw surprisingly well against the Steelers yes and here again uh, you know the, the surprising thing is really that the the Pittsburgh Steelers have not really expressed very much of a strong pass rush Archie has had all the time in the world to throw the football and here again I hate to belabor the point, but I think any time that he has a chance to throw the ball, he's going to get the ball to the right people. He's done that extremely well today, and will continue to do it if he has time enough to throw the football. We might see a little bit more blitzing in the second half by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, the Steelers got tough when they had to on that play that finally turned the ball over. But the Saints moving the ball down with great precision, throwing the ball very nicely. Archie Manning running those out patterns to Ike Harris deep, throwing well to his back. Muncie had a couple of big gainers. And Manning has so much poise, they say it takes a long time for a quarterback to get the exposure to NFL defenses where he can read coverages, but Manning certainly has that now. He just stands back there and he knows where he wants to go. He takes a look at every receiver he's got downfield and has made the connection. So we're going to have a football game the whole distance in this one, it looks like. The Saints able to move the ball in the first half against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Actually, you know, the Pittsburgh team has moved the ball very well against the Saints also, but they made some mistakes that kept them out of a scoring opportunity. Well, what would you anticipate now, Hank, the, uh, the Steelers might come out doing? We didn't see Bradshaw thrown so well that you're doing a great deal so far. Well, really, you know, when you analyze what they tried to do in the first half, they ran the ball very well. They liked the trap. They ran up the middle uh, like you think they would. They ran successfully. Uh, they had a, um, a pass where they created a fumble situation, and, and the Saints recovered. But I don't think they'll change very much offensively, except hopefully try to keep away from making big mistakes. Now they talk about the emotional factor in football as psychology and it's got to be difficult for a team like the Steelers with already a three game lead in their division to be up every week but they have to be because everybody's gunning for them. Yes and, and the big thing you know when you're a good football team the one thing that you stress and you have to do you have to establish a very strong killer instinct when you have 
when you have a lead and you have an opportunity to put teams away, you have to take advantage of that. And uh, this is what this, this team has to develop uh, better as they go along in this season. The uh, final recovery we're going to watch now when Joe Green came up with it on the last offensive play of this half for New Orleans and Pittsburgh ran out the clock. Here it is. Archie Manning is trapped. The ball's coughed up. Joe Green gets those big hooks on it. And that cost New Orleans a chance, of course, to get points, more points. They are leading the game 7-3 to three here at halftime. Yeah, if there's one area of play that has been surprising, it has been the play of the offensive line of the Saints against a very formidable front four of the Pittsburgh Steelers' name. Well, you know, that, here again, that's a very deceptive thing because Robert Woods uh, was a starting tackle for the uh, New York Jets for five years, and so he's a very good football player. Dave LaFari is about 180, a big, strong guard. Fred Sturt played with New England. Yeah, 280. Uh, Sturt uh, has played a lot, too, with, uh, was up at New England, and he's a fine young player. So overall, the only real rookie they have is Taylor, the left tackle, and he's doing a good job. So you really have to give them a lot of credit. And, of course, John Hill is an excellent center and is kind of the hub of that offensive line. How w good do you think New Orleans conceivably can do? Do you think this team is playing above its head now, or could it conceivably go on and have a, a substantial winning season? Well, I said before the season, I really thought they could have a six to eight uh, season. And uh, so they can go as far as they want to go. Okay, let's go to Brent Musburger right now at CBS Control in New York. Brent? Don right now is that the Green Bay Packers are setting up a field goal. You're looking live. The final five seconds of the first half, Green Bay and Philadelphia. It is right now 7-3. The Eagles are leading the Packers. The Packers have been victimized by a touchdown pass that was called back. Whitehurst to Lofton of 79 yards. Then later in the game, they were punting out from the one-yard line. McCarron got off a bad snap. The fumble was recovered, and John Shara, the man for all plays for the Philadelphia Eagles, came in to direct the Eagles at quarterback, and on a rollout play, he got into the end zone. Eagles added the extra point. It is now 7-3. So those of you who have watched Pittsburgh and New Orleans so far, you're getting a bonus. The last five seconds of the first half, Chester Marco will attempt to kick his second field goal in the first half for Bart Starr. And the Packers again trailing right now, 7-3, this the final five seconds. McCarron again the center. This time the snap is perfect. Hooked a bit though on the kick. McCarron pulled it a little bit and it is no good. So Chester Marco misses the field goal as the half runs out. Now, what's going to happen is we are going to break away for a regular halftime commercial. We're going to bring you back to New York, update all the scores, and have some highlights, and Jane Kennedy will have a piece on Tom Landry and Don Shula, whom Irv Cross talked to earlier this week about the upcoming doubleheader game on CBS. We're here in the desert to prove how much power and endurance is packed into the Skill Cordless 3 8 inch drill and screwdriver. With just one charge, we drilled 199 holes. 200. And it still has enough muscle to drill through concrete and drive screws into metal with two-speed trigger for better control. For any tough job at home or anywhere, take along the Skill Cordless drill and screwdriver and do it with skill. With great skill and discipline, you teach what's been kept a secret for centuries. And when the lesson has been taught and learned, now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller Highline. Uh, sir, uh, excuse me. Uh, you just bought a new maintenance-free Firestone Forever battery. How come? Uh, well, the warranty. <laughs> you see, if this battery ever fails to hold the charge for the original owner, uh, that's me, <laughs> in the car in which it was originally installed, right here, Firestone will replace it free with proof of purchase, provided it's not merely discharged or uh, damaged due to accident or abuse. Oh, and uh, I don't even have to put in water. <laughs> that answer your question? Uh, yes, it sure does. The Forever battery, now maintenance-free. On Sunday, CBS Sports presents the Emmy Award-winning NFL Today Show with Brent Musburger, Jane Kennedy, and Irv Cross. We'll have Jane Kennedy going on to the field with the headline makers. Irv Cross showed me two ways to stop these guys. 
So defensive back, take notes. We'll also have Jimmy the Greek's prediction and incisive commentary by Jack Whitaker. The Emmy Award winning NFL Today Show. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. A beautiful November Sunday, but not too much scoring. Let's check the scoreboard now and get you up to date right away. 7-3. Many of you watching this game in Philadelphia. The rest of you are watching this contest. New Orleans and Pittsburgh, and the Saints have moved the ball. They might have scored at least a field goal, but Archie Manning fumbled it away, and the Steelers alertly pounced on it. The Cardinals are dominating the Giants by 14 points. Atlanta and San Francisco. The 49ers had a sure touchdown pass drop. Falcons bounce back with a touchdown, 7-3 in the second quarter. Typical Detroit-Minnesota battle in Bloomington, 3-0 right now. The Vikes are ahead. New England has just scored to go ahead of Buffalo, 7-3. That game is in the second quarter. Cleveland and Houston, and first Seattle-Chicago, with the Seahawks leading the Bears by a score of 7-3. That is in the second quarter, so the Bears could lose for the seventh straight time. Now, Cleveland and Houston, they are scoreless in the first quarter of that game. And another one that is just underway, Oakland and Kansas City. They are scoreless in the first. And, Jane, what have we got on our doubleheader game? Well, Brent, in a little while, the Miami Dolphins will host the Dallas Cowboys in the CBS doubleheader game. Both coaches, Tom Landry of Dallas and Don Shula of Miami, reflected on how much this particular game means to them and how other teams react after you've won a Super Bowl. The reason it is the biggest game is that we're both one behind our uh, leaders in our divisions and we only have seven games to go uh, we've been down two already this year uh, early in the year but when time starts to run out uh, then games become very very important so this has to be a must game for both Miami and Dallas we've had some big ones in the past but uh, certainly at this point in the season this has got to be a big game our offense has to be able to control the football we've got to have some type of running game now Delvin Williams has been doing an excellent job for us but, of course, the Dallas Flex defense pretty much controls whoever they want to control. As far as defensively, you just have to keep your poise. You can't worry about all the shifting that's going on and then forget to play when the ball is snapped. you got to let all that camouflage go on and make your adjustments defensively, and then when the ball is snapped, play tough defensive football. I think the thing you got to remember in our uh, league, in the National Football League, that our game is, is pretty much of a mental game. Uh, it depends on how your players think, uh, where you are, uh, what you're doing. You have to take winning and the success that goes with it, uh, and you can't let it get to your head. And I think when you come off the Super Bowl, in most cases you're overrated the next year from what you really are. Uh, other teams come after you much stronger than they've ever come because if you win the Super Bowl in 1977, then you are the measuring stick for 1978. Teams enjoy playing against teams that have a reputation for winning and uh, we've won through the years so that's why teams enjoy getting it up for us. People enjoy beating the Dolphins not so much because Don Shula coaches the Miami Dolphins but I think the fact that we have won Super Bowls. And when you're fighting for the Super Bowl everything seems to be on the upbeat. Everybody wants to win they're paying a great price. Once you win the thing then you don't you want to win it again but subconsciously you're just not ready to play at the same level you played before and so uh, sometime along the season you get in a position like we are right now where you got to make up your mind whether you're going to come back and win it or not or whether you're going to be uh, watching the other teams play on Christmas Day. And we'll have some highlights of games that are already underway as the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. A practical joke causes a strange bedfellow for Archie. Be here when he wakes up on the morning after the night before on All in the Family tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on CBS. off camera yeah good good the reason I ask I have my tie open my coat off my pants off right. 
Do we feed the house in uh, breaks? Yeah, right, exactly. That is the halftime number here at Pittsburgh. New Orleans seven, the Steelers three, and now the Pittsburgh Steelers come back out into the field on the run. The Saints have not come out yet, but they will be coming out, and we'll see if this Pittsburgh defense is able to slow down the passing game of Archie Manning. That has been the difference through the first two quarters of play, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff in a moment. This is a bodybuilding course. Take it. If you'd like the chance to be in this kind of shape, join the people who have joined the Army. For more information, call this number toll-free. Good old Charlie, that's me. Somebody's got a dead battery and they call good old Charlie. And I jump start a rain, snow, day, night. Well, this time I tell them, get your own Die Hard. The maintenance-free Die Hard has extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. This is the last time. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, many times. The Die Hard sold only at Sears. That's my team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm John Cole. Let me show you a great way to see Pittsburgh. Take the incline, a railway that climbs up the side of Mount Washington. It was built in 1877. The cars still have hand-carved wood inside and the original glass fixtures. From the top, you get this view of Pittsburgh. Modern, industrial, glass and steel. Even though Pittsburgh was one of the first cities to rebuild, it still is a traditional town with basic values. That's why we have programs like Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Every boy and girl needs a special friend to look up to, to share problems with. Big Brothers and Sisters finds those special friends for young people with no mothers or fathers. Volunteers who just by being there can make a big difference in a young person's life. In Pittsburgh, the Big Brothers and Sisters are supported by our United Way. The United Way works in Pittsburgh. It works in your town too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. And that is the first half breakdown of statistics, eh? We see the Pittsburgh Steelers with six first downs, New Orleans with 14. That's a surprise. Yeah, they're really dominating the game offensively, and really and truly, they're throwing the ball so well. Anytime they want to throw the ball, they've had the protection and they've completed passes. I would think that their approach to the second half would be to maintain the passing personality and then run pass first and run second, but kind of go into the second half with the anticipation of using a passing draw screen uh, personality rather than trying to run the ball on first down and have to throw it on second and third. Well, Archie Manning lit at 9 of 12 and Bradshaw you're looking at hit on 5 of 6 for 63 yards. The longest gainer a 29 yarder. So both quarterbacks are going to keep that number one ranking they enjoy apparently. Right now we have Larry Anderson dropping back deep for Pittsburgh as you see Steve Mickemeyer teeing up the ball for New Orleans at his 35 yard line. Total yards in the first half. The Saints had 193 yards against the Steelers, 125. Anderson, the deep man for the Pittsburgh Steelers, is Steve Mickemeyer set to kick the ball off. He hits it downfield, and Anderson at the 5. The 10, he's across the 20, and Bill Zerk looking on the outside. He cuts cut down to the 22-yard line, and there it'll be first and 10 for Pittsburgh. Eric Felt, the rookie player, came up to make the play for New Orleans. 
Bay Lewis, as you saw, Brent Musburger updating the scores of the half. A surprise 14-0 leader over the New York Giants. Maybe Bud Wilkinson's getting something together there now. You know, they've lost a lot of close games. I've seen them a couple of times, and they were in every game that they played. Now it's kind of kind of falling together, it looks like, and uh, they could go on from here and really enjoy a good year. Team doctor and trainer are talking to Jack Lambert on the Pittsburgh dance. I don't know if he's been shaking up. Hasn't been in the second half. He hasn't been out there yet. First and ten carry doesn't get much as the Saint defense runs it down. Pat Hughes, outside linebacker on the right side, made the hit. It'll be second down now. And ten, no gain. Dealer scored first in this game on a 27-yard field goal by Roy Girella in the first quarter. Uh, that was on their first possession. The Saints score came on a Manning to Mahdi pass the second quarter. That stands now 7-3 New Orleans. Bradshaw lets it, swings it out to Franco Harris. And the big guy from Penn State rolls out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. He has a first down for Pittsburgh. That time here again, it was that delayed pattern to, jo uh, to Harris. Webster, number 52, the offensive center. He comes out there in good shape and gets a piece of Merlot. And uh, Franco Harris cuts inside and makes a nice game, first and 10, Pittsburgh. Lynn Swan, he is wide to the right. So far today, Swan hasn't caught a pass. He came in as the leading pass receiver in the AFC with 43. Franco Harris breaks tackles at the line of scrimmage. On a first down, he carries the ball out to the 39. He got five, knocked down by cornerback Maurice Spencer, 29. He should have been tackled at the line of scrimmage, actually, but, boy, you're not going to tackle him with arm tackles. There's a piece and miss. There's Federspiel Fetter, uh, overrunning the play and, and tried to slap him down. There's uh, Tommy Myers trying to tackle him high and doesn't succeed, and he picks up about five yards on the play. Just great running, strong running by Franco Harris. St. Louis now leading the Giants 20 to nothing. So the Giants have collapsed. Here is a handoff going right up the middle is Rocky Blyer. First down yardage. He's out to the 48-yard line. Again, Pat Hughes was on the knockdown for the Saints. And Detroit has gone ahead of Minnesota 7-3. They're just running right at the defense that time and getting good blocking at the point of attack. The right side of the Steeler offense called number 55, Davis. Uh, 57, Webster again, and Mullins, Penny, all do a great job and are not going to walk the line of scrimmage. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Saints lead the game. 7-3, to three, the Steelers are driving on their first possession of the second half. Back to Blyer, and this time Fettersfield, the middle linebacker, is there to fill the gap, make the knockdown, no gain on the play. It'll be second down at 10. They run that counter play two times, and both times, Joe Fettersfield, number 58, did a good job of reading the blocks and uh, keeping the play from gaining any kind of yardage. They picked up about a yard, yard and a half on the play. You have to wonder, Hank, when Bradshaw's going to let one rip to Lynn Swan. We saw him throw long to him earlier, but it was overthrown. Swan did have the cornerback beat. He gets in right field position. He'll pump it up and get it over the top. He'll try it, I'm sure. Second and eight now. He could be looking for Swan here. Bradshaw takes a look. He's going long to Lynn Swan. And the ball is tipped away by Clarence Chapman. There's a penalty over here on the sideline. I don't know who he was against. We'll find out in just a minute. Some kind of a pass interference infraction, I'm sure. Looks like it's against the New Orleans Saints. We'll see. Yep. Pardon? It'll now be second down. Well, here's the penalty being stepped off as the ball is being moved down to the 44-yard line. Here's the call. The illegal contact foul, number 29, defense, first down. Here's a replay of Lynn Swan's pattern. Let's see if he was illegally bumped more than five yards downfield. No, I think it was Stallworth coming underneath him. He was running a flat enough pattern, and even though the, the linebacker said, pardon me, didn't count, doesn't make any difference, so they still call it. On Spencer, and here is a handoff to Franco Harris. A quick slap, he takes the ball down to the New Orleans 40-yard line. Joe Campbell, a second-year defensive end, former number one draft choice out of Maryland to the Saints. Playing the right end, 73, was on the stop. Franco, working hard. 
durable, fast. Here's another guy. You're talking about Chuck Muncy with his 4-5 speed. Franco Harris is pretty, pretty close to that. Just as big. It's amazing the ability of some of these athletes. Yeah, and the great thing about Harris and both Chuck, they get off the ball so quickly and get into the line of scrimmage and beyond the linebacker so fast. This play action. Bradshaw's looking deep. He throws with the ball as the tight end. Grossman, he has the first down. And Randy Grossman, who you don't hear much about, but he's got of the best hands for catching pass of anybody in the league. Makes the reception and charges ahead for a Steeler first down. Hughes again on the stop. It was a delayed pattern. They fake a rollout to the right side. Grossman kind of blocks to his right and then goes to his left and is wide open. Makes a nice catch and a good run. He knows where he has to go and he makes the necessary yardage. He's met there by a host of same tacklers, uh, namely Ray Brown, number 27. But it's first and ten, Pittsburgh. Elias Grooms, Alex Price, Sterling Moore, and Joe Campbell across the defensive front of New Orleans. Merlo, Fettersfield, and Hughes backing the line as the Steelers set to break the huddle now with Webster down over the ball of center. Davis and Mullins, the guards. Cold and Ray Penny are the tackle. Steelers trailing but starting to mount a challenge as Bradshaw fires hard. And Lynn Swan had the ball and lost the thrill incomplete. No catch and fumble. Lynn Swan isn't tall. He's six feet tall, but he is a spectacular jumper. He is California yeah. high jump champion as a boy. Yeah, he no, uh, you don't see him drop many balls like this. Bradshaw threw it right at the numbers. That's where you like for him to throw it. It's nothing but a stop pattern, turn in. The ball's right at the numbers. You can't throw him any better than that. And he's hit by Ray Brown, 27 and Spencer 24 and drops the football. Incomplete. So we're now seeing, we're seeing two great quarterbacks out in Saturday. Well, we are. They're putting on a show. Bradshaw and the Steelers with a second down and 10 coming up with the New Orleans 35. Again, that trap blocking you've talked about is evidence there as the Steelers bust open the Saints defensive front. Watch Rocky Blyer. But good blocking at the point of attack again. The offensive center, you can't run that play effectively down unless the offensive center, number 52, Webster, does a good job. And both center, both teams have excellent centers. John Hill and Webster. Bradshaw on third and four, throws it but too low for Rocky Blyer coming out of the backfield and coming up nicely with the free safety Tom Myers. That time they had a blitz. Pat Hughes was coming from the backside. He saw him, got rid of the ball before he actually wanted to, and as a result threw it into the ground and fell incomplete. So it's fourth down and four now. It would be a very long field goal for Jarella, and apparently the Steelers are going to look for the first down. So they have fourth down and four. Yes, there has been. Another blitz. Another blitz. Lynn Swan goes up in the air. There's that jumping ability, and Lynn Swan has a first down, and Three Rivers Stadium now thunders with a standing ovation. A superb pass-catch combination of Bradshaw to Swan. That time it was a blitz again. Fetterspe was coming. I tell you, he was covered well, really, by uh, Chapman, but he just jumped up in the air and made a fantastic catch, just incredible catch, and he has enough composure to come back down. Clarence Chapman finally makes a tackle along with Ray Brown, but it's first and six on the six for Pittsburgh, a beautiful must play by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came on a fourth down, fourth and almost four, and the Steelers now have it first and goal at the six. <laughs> Bradshaw's looking, he throws, ball tipped and caught. Incredible Touchdown. catch, Lynn Swan. That ball was tipped, had great concentration, and he still came up with a catch. Lynn Swan, number 88. What a beautiful play, a rollout right. The, the Saints were in good position to make an interception or to make a play, but it was deflected. You see Merlo going to the outside, Elois Grooms coming in, putting good pressure. Merlo tipped the ball. And Ray Brown, Ray Brown is right there to make a play, but uh, the concentration on the part of, there you see Merlo making the tip. Concentration by Len Swan is just incredible. He makes the catch and uh, touchdown Pittsburgh. 
And the Steelers now take a 9-7 lead, looking for a 10-point. Jarella knuckleballs it up and through. And so, with 9 minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the third quarter here at Three Rivers Stadium, the Steelers drive down the field on their first possession of the third quarter and score. Wherever you may roam, you'll find us near your home. Oh, hi, it's me again, hosting and tasting more posters. This time it's for the first annual Delco battery sale. AC Delco is making it possible for you to buy a Freedom battery at a special sale price. Thanks, Delco. Wherever you see this poster, look for it in, uh, look for it in your neighborhood for a great price on a battery you can trust. Thanks, Delco. Well, you'll be saying thanks, Delco, too. Nobody does it better than Hertz. Nobody does it better. Hertz leads the others by far. Nobody does it better for you. Hertz, the superstar. Nobody has more of what it takes to rent your Fairmont, Mustang, LTD, or other fine car faster. Hertz, the superstar. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, see NFL doubleheader action. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Terry Bradshaw throwing for the touchdown to Lynn Swan, and the Steelers rally back on their first possession of the third period to go ahead 10 to 7, and Bradshaw hit his 17th touchdown pass. One below his career best for a season. He had 18 one year. That's his best. He's going to surpass that this year. Chandler runs out of bounds with the kickoff return, getting across the 20. Rich Marty that time, number 84, got a good block, and it looked like maybe something was going to happen there, but the rest of the coverage was very good, and, of course, Chandler had to run it out of bounds. Now the defense try comes out as the Steelers send out their defensive unit. Archie Manning and the Saints, both quarterbacks have been spectacular. Bradshaw is 9 for 12 in the game for 108 yards and the touchdown we just saw to Lynn Swan. Manning with equally impressive numbers for even more yardage. Shell knocked him down, but you can see that enormous penalty of Chuck Muncy just to fake and then all of a sudden turn on the heat. Holding on the Saints. You know, the other great thing about Muncy is the fact that you get him down the sideline and he's hard to knock off his feet and not get knocked out of bounds. A lot of times the defensive back thinks, you know, he's got the angle, it's going to hit him, but he, does, but he gives him a shot and uh, he maintains balance and goes right down the sideline. Uh, he does that as well as anybody I've ever seen as a running back. We're going to watch him do it again here. Here's, this is a play that he runs extremely well. He's got the ball in the wrong arm, though, as coaching coming out. He should have it in the left arm away from the pressure. Now he's changing it, puts it on the left side, whereby he can use the shoulder. You see, if, he'd, if he kept the ball on the other side, he couldn't have used the shoulder because had he been hit, the ball could have been popped out, and as a result, it's bad technique. But he changed the ball. Here Holding it is. number 39, offense, first down. Mr. Bradshaw and Mr. Swan, an all-pro combination, talking things over on the Steelers' sideline. Their pass-catch combination just gave the Steelers back the lead after they trailed at the half, 7-3, they now lead 10-7. 8.55 to play in the third quarter. And it's first and 20 after the holding call against New Orleans. Well, their plan is very obvious. They still want to run to the left as much as they possibly can when they do run, but they've thrown the ball so successfully, the draw, the trap, the screen, that kind of thing should be very effective. Now the Steeler defense starts to play football. Dwight White, Submarines, the offensive blocking. Lauren Page comes in with him. They're not going to beat this Pittsburgh team running the football down. They're going to beat them with a forward pass. And, of course, it's sticky here because they've got bad field position. And I'm sure once they get it, some breathing room, they'll pump the ball up and get it up in the air again. But this is the way they're going to beat Pittsburgh. They're not going to beat them running the football. Overall, they're number one in the AFC in defense. They're second in the conference against the rush. And they're fifth against the pass, but overall they grade out as the number one defense in the American Conference, and they've not lost in their last ten times to an NFC team here at Pittsburgh. Last team to beat them at Pittsburgh was the Rams back in 1971. They keep changing their look that time. The tight end should be wide open. Boy, Henry Childs living daringly as he turned his back to that defense coming up. 
And a fine defensive play breaks the play up and very nearly results in an interception. He was wide open. They had a double coverage on the outside, and he was wide open getting down the middle. Uh, watch him come off the line of scrimmage. He's open all this time. Watch him once he gets by the linebacker. But the ball is just a little bit late. And uh, the defensive back really does a great job of uh, making a play on that particular inside move. Tony Dungy, number 21, made the play. So Manning now has the pressure on him, third and 19, and that Steeler defense set to come full speed. As Manning takes the deep drop, and here come the Steelers. He swings it out to Muncy. He outruns Lambert. Stays in bounds, but he's well short of a first down. He got nine yards on the play, but is going to bring up fourth down now, and the Saints will have to punt the ball back to the Steelers as Ron Johnson, the rookie cornerback, made the hit. Halftime score coming in. The Cardinals looking for their second victory and well on their way to it, it would appear, Be leading the Giants 20 to nothing. The Giants were talking wild card until this week. Detroit Lions up by a surprise score, seven to three over the Vikings at the half. Minnesota coming off consecutive back-to-back -back wins now over Green Bay and Dallas by impressive scores. Well, Lancer kick. just kicked it way over the return man, and Leo Bell finally caught it out on Willie Mays over the shoulder, and the coverage is good by Marty, who makes the knockdown. He's the guy that caught the touchdown pass for New Orleans for their only score. And the Steelers go back on offense as they start to gear up now in the third quarter. Their first possession, they took it right down the field. Ultimately took it in for a touchdown. And now they'll try to make it go again as the Steelers are holding to a 10-7 lead with 7-16 to play in the third quarter. That was a 60-yard punt by Blanchard. They're doing it in every city, town, and hamlet in America. An estimated 10 million people. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans are encouraging it because we're trying hard to hold the cost of health care down and people who stay fit help. So to all of you out huffing and puffing in America today, Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans want to say thanks for giving the cost of health care a good run for the money. magnificent flying machine, the 79 Thunderbird. I love its luxurious cockpit. Fly with a V8 engine. Power steering and power brakes, all standard. Glide in great style with wrap over roof and opera windows at a down-to-earth sticker price. 79 Thunderbird. What a way to fly at your Ford dealer. Lots of football next Sunday on CBS. Doubleheader day. First games include the Giants and the Redskins at Washington, Tampa Bay at Detroit, Atlanta at New Orleans. Chicago goes against the Vikings at Bloomington, Minnesota. Then the doubleheader games. Dallas against the surprising Green Bay Packers. And the Cardinals in San Francisco. Consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Some cities will see only a single game due to the NFL blackout policy. And of course, Brent, Jane, and Irv. Half hour before kickoff with an update on all the action around the league. And right now, Brent Shaw takes a look to throw. Timing pattern, Lynn Swan intercepted. Clarence Chapman outran Lynn Swan to the ball, and the Saints have the football at the 46-yard line, their own, and they'll go back on offense with excellent field position, trailing by but three points. They try to throw the ball on the left side to Stallworth on a square and up. Maurice Spencer on the other side did a good job. Number 29, he went to the right side and really threw it very poorly, and that's why the ball was intercepted. Think of all the stereo receivers out there, all the sophisticated electronics, all the heavy price tags. Not one of these receivers has all the features found in JCPenney's remarkable MCS Series 75-watt receiver. Features like a graphic equalizer with LED readouts, an FM multipath deviation meter, an LED signal strength meter. JCPenney's MCS Series 75-watt receiver. Think of it. Extra, extra, read all about me. New mobile super unleaded gasoline. Boy, oh boy. Well, I got higher octane. It's in all the papers, boss. I mean, I fight Knox. I fight pink. And I'm so great, I'm also replacing mobile premium. Paper, sir? Extra, extra, read all about me. Mobile super unleaded gasoline. 
Next Saturday at 4.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see Hugo Coro defend his world middleweight championship against Rodrigo Valdez. You say, you saw it on CBS Sports. So let's see if he pumps the ball up on first down, Don, and see what he what he does here with good field position on first and ten. The interception by Clarence Chapman giving the Saints that good field position. Here comes Ike Harris and Rush. He's got some nice ones today in the first half. And Manning is going to take a look at that play action throw, and he's got Henry Childs as tight end for a first down. He talked about Henry Childs at the outset. Hank is a premier tight end. He doesn't get a lot of press, but he sure gets open. Oh, he's he's as good as anybody in the league. It's a play action pass, a good call. That against the zone defense, the tight end's got to be open. There's no way you can cover him the way they're trying to play zone coverages. And uh, I alluded to this early in the game, but uh, Henry Childs that time was wide open and a good call on first and 10 by Archie Manning. Originally drafted in the fifth round, Henry Childs went to Atlanta that year in 1974. Joined the Saints that same season as a free agent. So the Saints now starting them out of challenge. Here's that same play they started the game with. Timing pattern they're going to Chuck Muncy. Lauren Taves, the outside linebacker, staying right with him. Muncy, Muncy could not get to the ball. I think Manning wisely put it out of reach. Yes, the last time they did that with the same fake, they hit Tinker Owens on a stop pattern. He was wide open. This time he ran deep, and they tried to swing Chuck Muncy behind him. But the linebacker, Taze, 51, did a good job of covering, and Archie wi very wisely threw the ball over the top and incomplete. Manning has now thrown the ball 15 times in the game, has completed 11 for 172 yards, and one touchdown. The Saints only scored to Rich Motti, and he's been intercepted once. That's by Jack Lambert. The linebackers are getting good depth. Uh, it'll be a good opportunity for him to get the ball to the back some, too. This time they're in a bump and run. See if Archie tries to change the ball. It's a blitz. It's a blitz, and they're trying to throw the ball up on top. Oh, very close to a flag on Shell, who was covering Childs, and Childs is sure looking for one, but none was forthcoming. Hen Henry Childs, that time they were blitzing. Archie ball threw the ball to Henry Childs, who was open. It was definitely pass interference, and the official didn't call it. There was no question about it. It was oh, definitely yeah. pass interference. No. So the Steelers' defense gets a very big break. That would have been an automatic first down for the Saints as Dick Nolan. I'm sure not very happy with that development. Saints will now have the ball third down and 10. You recall that go-ahead touchdown drive was highlighted by a fourth down pass by Bradshaw, fourth and four, that went all the way down to the five-yard line, where it was goal for the Pittsburgh Steelers with a first down. They subsequently hit Lynn Swan for the touchdown. The outside receivers are doubling again this time. This time they're tr throwing deep. Oh, it's a bad throw. Well, Blunt wanted it. Tony Dungy had it. Blunt came in front of him and blew an interception. Blunt, Blunt actually intercepts, tried to intercept the ball from Dungy. Uh, it would have been a very easy interception, but Lenny, I mean, Archie, throws the ball downfield a little bit too long, and you see Blunt and Dungy both there to make the play. Either one of them makes the catch, and now it's a fourth down situation for the Saints. And so, the Saints now come out of the huddle, setting for a long field goal attempt. The holder is Blanchard. He can't throw the football. 51-yard attempt by Nikama. He can kick it that far. He's got a good, strong leg. If he gets the ball up, gets the flats up, he might get it through there. He's got it long enough. But unfortunately for the Saints, he does not have it through the upright. And so it goes as a long touchback. No, not really. It goes back to the line of scrimmage on the play, so it'll come out outside the 20. And it'll be first and ten there for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they hold to a 10 to 7 lead. We have 5.56 left to play in the third period. We'll be back in a moment. Today you'll turn a mountain of canvas and a truckload of living dynamite into one of the world's oldest fantasies, the circus. And together with every man and beast you've got, you'll haul and shove and shake that mountain until you finally reach the moment that says it's done. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, 
America's quality beer since 1855. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Beer after beer, you've got the time, we've got the beer. Some other scores coming in from around the league. The Philadelphia Eagles holding the 7-3 lead over the Green Bay Packers at Veterans Stadium. The Cardinals with a halftime lead and decided advantage 20-0 over the Giants. Atlanta leading San Francisco in the second quarter, 7-3. Detroit up over Minnesota at the half at Bloomington, Minnesota, 7-3. And New England, a team that's really starting to cook, leading the Buffalo Bills 14-3. Houston and Cleveland scoreless in the first quarter. This is Don Cricky with Hank Stram, Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh. Steelers have the ball in the lead, 10 to 7. Saints get tough. Saints have not given up many points this year. An improving defense. They've given up a total now of 27 points over their last three victories, three straight victories. 10 points here to the Steelers today. They've had trouble defending against the run, though, overall. That's been their uh, one area they've had the problem with. Giving up yardage to the run. Giving up a lot of yardage, but not that many points. The Saints defense, that bend but doesn't break theorem holding here. Bradshaw fires. Lynn Swan catches 48-yard line, first down Pittsburgh. Clarence Chapman hit him, the man who intercepted a little bit earlier for New Orleans. That time they had a slot to the right with uh, Swan, Stallworth on the same side. The backs go to the opposite direction. Bradshaw sets up nicely and throws the ball again right at the numbers on a stop pattern right in front of Clarence Chapman, number 24, and it's good for a first down. Maurice Spencer is the cornerback to the right side for New Orleans. Clarence Chapman to the left. He's up against all pro Lynn Swan. And Starworth on the other flank for Pittsburgh is just about as good. Franco Harris, change of pace move, and Harris breaks tackles, goes out of bounds at the St. 45-yard line. Tom Myers running about. Franco Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of the great backs in the history of the game. 7,000 yards and seven seasons in the NFL, and he's going to play a lot more. Durable, fast, catches the ball, blocks. John called that, called that time, did a good job on the defensive right end. Joe Campbell, number 73, that made that run possible. It's going to be second down and about three. Harris has 42 yards and 10 carries today. And over 700 for the season. Back to Franco Harris, and again, hit at the line of scrimmage. He spins away and comes very close to a first down. Pat Hughes finally threw him down. You look at sold out, Three River Stadium here in Pittsburgh. Somebody asked Art Rooney, the 78-year-old president of the Steelers, it's still as big a thrill winning these days as it used to be in the early days of the NFL. He said, big thrill in the early days wasn't winning, it was meeting the payroll on Monday. <laughs> and winning's a big thrill. I don't care when you play. 30 years ago, today, 15 years ago, whenever you win, it's always a big thrill. There is Chuck Knoll, now in his 10th year as the head coach of the Steelers. His first season, 1969, they won one game, lost 13. They subsequently drafted Terry Bradshaw, number one, in the next draft. And it was very few years later that they had consecutive Super Bowl rings to wear. And they really put, a, put together one of the outstanding football teams in the National Football League, which is very obvious. You don't win by accident, you win, you win with people. And this is exactly what these people are doing. Noel was an assistant coach at San Diego and Baltimore before coming to Pittsburgh in 69. Third down and inches for the Steelers. 43-yard line in New Orleans. Franco Harris gets that and a whole lot more, and had he not been tripped, he might have gone a long way. Tommy Myers saved a big, big gainer. It was just a straight-ahead shot. Good blocking on the part of the left tackle, Cobb and Davis, the left guard. They ran at Derlin Moore that time, and Joe Campbell and did a good job of uh, making yardage on the play first and 10, Pittsburgh. Our spotter, Bernie McGinley, very close to the Steeler organization, says that the general consensus seems to be, while they don't like to talk about it, this could very definitely be a team just every bit as good as the two teams that won Super Bowl. Being healthy, as Shula's always said, is such a vital aspect to winning, going the distance. Bradshaw with an arm like a cannon guns the ball with a flick of the wrist 25 yards straight downfield and Blyer catches it coming back for a first down. Boy, Blyer did a good job of coming back. Look at him throw this though. Yeah, watch it. He, he what an arm. 
and he doesn't throw it off on balance very well either that time. He's going to his left. The important thing, the thing that made that play successful was the fact that Rocky Blyer had the presence to come right back for the ball, and he caught it right off the turf, first and 10, Pittsburgh. So the Steelers start to get their act together here in the third quarter. Their first possession, they drove for a touchdown. Now they could be moving towards another score as Bradshaw looks. He throws, man is open. Grossman, who has just spectacular hands, and Grossman catches the ball at the 11. They say if it's near Grossman, he's going to get it. Well, he stuck that ball right up like he had <laughs> vacuum sweepers on his hands. I don't know how he caught that one that time because he was low and he was running to the right. Watch him. And actually, the coverage was not bad by Ray Brown, number 27. And actually, if you're going to throw the ball, the guy that you want to find in that secondary is uh, Ray Brown, 27. They located him that time and had a man-for-man -man situation, first and 10 Pittsburgh. Looks like they're going to run to the left. Let's see what they do. Run to the left. And pretty well as they get the ball down close to the five. Bradshaw has now thrown 16 for the Steelers. It's completed 12 for 147 yards. One touchdown, one interception. And a 10-7 lead right now for Pittsburgh as the third quarter shows 2.30 to play in it and the clock running. Second down and five coming up now for the Steelers. They conceivably could get another first down on this drive. They have to advance the ball to the one to do that. Looks like they're going to run right this time. Let's see if they do. Yep. Hornibach's going to run right. He's going to look into the end zone. And Joe Fettersfield had a gift there but couldn't hold on. Very nearly an interception as Bradshaw threw a very errant pass. Yes, he, yes, he did. As a rollout to the right, it was very obvious they were going to do something to the right to where their backs cheated. Um, Stallworth fell in the end zone. That's who he was trying to throw the ball to. And Fetterspiel made a good play. And Riddy uh, had a good chance to intercept that, that ball. Bradshaw is the only quarterback in the NFL who's thrown at least one touchdown pass in every game this season. And he's also been a great third down quarterback. Passing for uh, over 700 yards on third downs this season. Sidney Thornton's in the game. Here's a bull of a back out of Northwest Louisiana, number 38. He leads the blocking as Franco Harris pushes and drives and gets himself down to the three-yard line. Derlin Moore knocked him down. A lot of strong people out there. Your Kansas City teams, Hank, were some of the first to really go into very extensive weight training. Now everybody's doing that. You've got to be strong to play this game. Yes, and of course, uh, the great thing about it is it develops players, it develops strength, and really permits them to play a, a, an overextended period of time. We started our program in 1963 and had off-season programs, but during the, the five-year period that we won so much, uh, Don, we never had one major operation of any kind which is a great tribute to the fact that we use weights and development. Alvin Roy did a great job for us in that respect. Right now, Jarrell is going to try a field goal with Cole quit holding. At plenty of distance, and Jarrell, who came into the game hitting 7 of 14 field goal tries, is 2 for 2 today, and the Steelers extend their lead to 13 to 7. So with a minute and 22 seconds left to play in the third quarter here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, after trailing at the half 7 to 3, now lead the New Orleans Saints 13 to 7. And some interesting uh, events to take place on Tuesday. We remind you to cast your vote and then cast your lot with television's top election team. Walter Cronkite heads the ticket as anchorman, while Harry Reasoner, Roger Mutt, Dan Rather, Leslie Stahl, and Bruce Morton bring you regional results from their posts around the nation. And Eric Severide sizes up the election picture with his penetrating analysis. That's election coverage with Walter Cronkite on the CBS team, Tuesday night. Getting set to kick the ball off from the 35-yard line, Roy Jarella, as the Steelers just went 62 yards in 10 plays, using four and a half minutes of the clock, the field goal from 21 yards out. West Chandler standing in the end zone in the middle there for New Orleans. He served notice the first preseason game he played in against, I guess it was the Eagles down in Mexico City. Took one back the distance. Ken Stabler has just thrown a touchdown pass to Raymond Chester. Oakland leads Kansas City 7-0. Chandler will return this one. Nope. Well, surprised at that move. Normally the rule is if the ball is 
about three yards deep. You still try to run it out of there. That's a, that time, the, the ball was just about two yards deep. And surprisingly, down the ball in the end zone and uh, elected to take it out to the 20. Talk about percentages in playing football. I guess the computer shows, if you look at all the kickoff returns, that's the breakdown, eight, three yards deep. Yeah, but it all depends on who's running the ball back. Yeah, I, I think any time you have a chandler, you want to make sure you run it as much as possible. And it's surprising that he didn't bring it out that time. Yeah, like the guy wants to throw it, the X's and O's work if some of the O's are O.J. Simpson's and some of the X's are Bob Lilly's or whoever. Exactly right. Play action on first down. And he throws. He's got a man open. Wes Chandler, the acronym from Florida, leaping way up into the air. Knocked down hard by Mel Blunt, but Wes Chandler catches a big one for the Saints. And trailing by six, they have the ball on the Pittsburgh side of the field. That's the great thing again about Archie Manning and Terry Bradshaw. Look at he's in trouble. He's running away from Taze, who was blitzing on the play number 51. And he throws the ball right on the money, right at the numbers. Mel Blunt, 47. Got a lot of, a lot of real estate to cover Wes Chandler. And uh, it's very difficult to do. First and 10. Saints, but they got to throw the ball. They got to keep it pumped up and throw the ball if they expect to win this football game. Wes Chandler, number 89, comes out of the huddle. He's got a lot of Lynn Swan in him. About the same size and the same ability to go to the moon to get the ball. Here comes Muncy running hard, and Muncy passes inside and still going. Yuck Muncy wants it. He got about 10. Lambert knocked him down along with Wagner, but the Saints are moving now late in the third quarter, trailing by six. Just a plain vanilla sweep from the I formation. Tony Galbraith out in front, Sturt out in front. Galbraith gets a good block out in front. But watch Muncie, watch him run through traffic, drag people, but he's big and strong and very fast, and Hardy gets knocked off his feet. Archie Manning is now 12 for 19, throwing the ball for 204 yards. Minnesota's come back to lead Detroit 10-7. Second down and inches for New Orleans. Muncie's carry was good for over nine yards and not quite ten. And here comes Galbraith. He's got the first down for the Saints. They go to the 36-yard line. As the Steelers are holding to a 13-7 lead. But the Saints are moving. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Pittsburgh Steelers 13, the New Orleans Saints 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. This Sunday on CAV. There's been an inmate takeover at your old prison. The prisoners have asked for you to be a go-between. We'll find out which side you're on. I'm one of you! This is CBS. We'll stay right up here in the press box and do the interviews in the sideline. Oh, okay. This is Don Crickey with Hank Stram back at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Steelers hold to a 13-7 lead as we head into the fourth quarter of play. The Saints are driving now, and there's the man whose right arm has led the way for them this season and this day, Archie Manning, as the Saints will come out of the huddle with the ball first and 10 at the Steelers' 36. As I mentioned earlier, this would be a good time for another pass or a draw play, possibly, but I think that personality of draw, screen, trap, uh, throw the ball is going to be very effective for the Saints. They're not going to move the ball that well offensively running the ball. They will on occasions a little bit running to the left, but they've got to win the game throwing the football and then going to the run. Oh, 
he breaks it. Chuck Muncy running hard, but the penalty marker flies in. Looks like a holding penalty it on, either, on either Galbraith. It looks like it's Galbraith, 34. I think that's who they called it on. There is the hold signal, so the good run by Muncy comes back, but in truth, the good run could have been initiated by the hold. Gets you around the corner. Tony Galbraith, head bowed. He has no reason to bow, though. He's done a big job for the Saints, been as important as just about any player they have this season. Atlanta now leading the 49ers 14 3. Bartkowski has holding to the number 34, offense, first down. Only two opponents this season have scored 20 or more points versus the Saints. Minnesota with 24 is top, but the first New Orleans won that game. And Pittsburgh has given up the fewest yards in the AFC, but has given up 24 points in the last two games. Ike, Ike Harris has a lot of room over here on this, on Ron Johnson. There there he is. On Harris. He's open, though. Oh, he was wide open. And he is separated by a hard hit from Ron Johnson, who is roundly congratulated by Jack Lambert, and Ike Harris is down. Okay, here we go. Archie Manning back in the pocket. Ron Johnson, the rookie, number 29, the left corner, gave Ike Harris a lot of room. He was wide open. Archie threw it just a little bit high, but he had his hands on it, should have made the catch. It would have been a tough catch, but he should have caught it because he had an opportunity to make the reception. So Ike Harris is attended to, shaken up on the plane. We'll be back. The financial capital of America to hundreds of investment firms. But whose thinking is sought by corporations and governments? Who is quoted almost every day in America's business press? Yet who always has time to help any investor of any size? You know who. There are lots of investment firms, but there's only one, Merrill Lynch. personal car for now the 79 futura with tomorrow's look right now space efficiency for now high mileage ratings that are now and a sticker price that says why wait the future isn't someday it's now the Futura is now. futura at your ford dealer the saints in white gold and black break the huddle trailing 13 to 7 fourth quarter upset of it second and 17 after the holding call they're going to run to the right, it looks like, or they're going to... He changed the play on the line of scrimmage because it looked like it was going to be a blitz. Galbraith is wide open. And he has the ball down to the 34-yard line, so he got back the penalty yardage and a couple more. But it's going to bring up third down and long. It'll be third and about eight. Ron Johnson out of Eastern Michigan, the number one draft choice of the Steelers, was there to make the play. He stepped right in as a starter. Steelers traded one of their starting safeties from last season. Another had to retire because of an illness. But Johnson was called on to move right in, and they've been pleased with him. Now Lauren Taves comes into the game. Dennis Winston also comes in, and the Steelers might call a timeout. They're not quite set to a line on defense. They want to talk it over. That's a very smart route, uh, move. I think any time that you, you have indecision and you have a question and you're not sure, why you, you better call a timeout to make sure that you get it straightened out. Sometimes late in the game, you kind of wish you had it back. But... Yeah, but... Zenith announces a breakthrough. breakthrough. System 3. System 3. The best Zenith ever. The best ever. A brand new picture tube for the sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. And an all new modular chassis. All new. Designed to be the best performing, the most reliable color TV in Zenith history. The most reliable. Zenith. System 3. System 3. It's the best Zenith ever. As a State Farm agent, when people come into my office and sign an application for insurance, my job is just beginning. There's no sitting back and putting the file away. Agent Vince Gramarosa talks about State Farm service. We're continually reviewing their protection. We're continually talking to them. It's on a personal service basis from day to day, month to month. We never forget the people. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
next Sunday on CBS Sports. See NFL doubleheader action. Check local listings for the games and times in your area. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. This is Kevin Holm for Dick Nolan. He was born in Pittsburgh. And across the way, Chuck Knoll. With his team holding to a six-point lead, takes a look out to see what the Steeler defense will do now on a third and nine play coming up for Nolan. They're, They're blitzing on the play. He gets the ball to Henry First Chow. Down. Great throw by Manning. A child is open. He's not done yet. He's down to the five-yard line. Donnie Shell knocks him down, so again, Manning comes up with the big third down play. There again, he spotted the blitz, and you can't advertise this blitz uh, to Archie Manning because he's going to spot it. He got the ball right just perfectly. Henry Childs, you're not going to cover him. Wagner, number 23, is trying to cover him, does a poor job of tackling him, and he fights his way through the traffic and goes down further for uh, a big gain on the first down for the New Orleans Saints. But a great illustration of what a great receiver Henry Childs is. Hey, one thing, when Childs catches it, he's not done. He got 29 yards on the reception, and the Saints now challenge to tie the game, and they get it in and get the extra point they go ahead. Galbraith, he's in. Touchdown, New Orleans. The game is tied at 13. And it's up to Nick and I are now to put the extra point up that could give the Saints the lead here in the fourth quarter. It's a... Straight ahead thrust, a blunt play that, <coughs> that you call it sometimes, where you just go straight ahead with all the blocking, the lead back blocks on the play. Tony Galbraith jumps to the outside, he reads the block. Here it is from behind the backfield. Galbraith running to his left, he's got the ball in the wrong arm, he should have it in his left arm. But it's good for distance, and Chuck Muncie out in front does a great job of blocking Mel Blunt, number 47. Well, you've got to say something about Dick Stanfell, the offensive line coach, who was one of the great players ever yeah. in the NFL, and he has tied this group together. Yes, he has. He's done a great job uh, with the offensive line. He's one of the very finest in the business. And the Saints have come back to take the lead in the fourth period. We're going to be back with a lot more football. We start with good, fresh chicken. Like we know we should. Eleven herbs and spices make a finger looking good. We don't freeze roll or chop it. It's chicken, nothing more. That's a real good reason why smart folks come here more. It's so nice. introduces a new wagon for the American road. The all-new LTD Country Squire for 79. A new wagon with more driver convenience, more handling ease, more window area, and more passenger room than last year's Country Squire. This land is your land. This land is my land. The all-new Ford LTD Country Squire for 79. See it at your Ford dealer now. Hi, I'm Coach Dan Rodigliano of the Cleveland Browns, and I hope you'll do it in the American way on Election Day. Go to the polls Tuesday and vote for the candidate of your choice. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Three of the Saints' five victories this season have come on the road, and right now they're ahead in the fourth quarter against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but Bradshaw has moved the Steelers when he's had to, and right now they get the ball back, and here's Larry Anderson. Across the 20, a short kickoff. Uh-oh, Anderson is gone. No, they get him. Eric Felton got him. Anderson had an open road, and Felton came out of nowhere. Eric Felton, the rookie defensive back, number 20. He just exploded through the opening as they cracked the same pursuit, and Felton saved the touchdown. Boy, he had some good running room here, a good hole. There you see him go through the cavity. You see Mickemeyer overrun the play. Track meet right now, and Felton wins. Felton really came from no place to make that tackle. Great effort by Eric Felton, number 20. Rocky Blyer turns up field and works for two tough yards. Eric Felton, the fifth-round draft choice out of Texas Tech. They list him as 4'6 speed, but I want to tell you one thing. That's the quickest 4-6 that's ever played the game right there. He looked like 4-1 that time. Because he was chasing 4-4 speed or 4-5.
Looked like there was a big brown spot on the field there where he singed the turf. He was ready flying. And now it's second and eight Steelers. New Orleans leads the game 14-13. 12.40 to play in the game. Flyer breaks it open, and Rocky Flyer's inside the 20. He has the first down for the Steelers. They haven't had much success against the Saints running sideways, but they really do a great job of running at the defense right at it. That time, it was a sucker play. They pulled the guard to the right side. Alex Price, number 75, went with the pulling guard. He went right through a gapping hole and made the necessary yardage, and then some for the first time. So the Steelers trailing by a point, challenging down the fourth quarter. They go to the run again. This time it is Franco Harris bringing the ball down to the St. 15-yard line. Joe Fettersfield, the middle linebacker, met him there of the comparative quarterback statistics. Manning throwing for 244 yards. Bradshaw for 147, each for a touchdown. Lynn Swan, with that graceful stride, literally bounces out to the right flank. To line as a wide receiver there. John Starworth is to the left. Harris spins off tacklers. Free football. And it looks like the Steelers have it. Don Reese, number 60, was in on the play. Made the initial contact along with Pat Hughes, number 54. It's a straight ahead thrust. Franco Harris. Sees the hole, runs into a pile, does some spinning, but the ball is jarred loose. It looked, it looked like it was jarred loose there by 74, Derlin Moore. Don Reese made a good play, and so did Pat Hughes, 54. And they credit Jerry Mullins with the fumble recovery. Rocky Blyer has now run for 71 yards and 14 carries for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw takes a look on third down. Aaron Chapman gets away with a close call on interference against Lynn Swan, and he wants to talk about it, does Lynn Swan. Yeah, that, 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 that time they balanced it out. Uh, the other time, Henry Childs was interfered with. This time, Swan definitely was interfered with, but they didn't call either one. Very important development here now. Jurella comes out to try a field goal. He is hit from 27 and 21 yards. This will be a 31-yard attempt. It would give New Orleans a two-par... Pittsburgh a two-point advantage and of course a field goal could conceivably win the game for New Orleans later. We have a lot of time left. 10.47. Hits the upright. It's no good. And the jubilant New Orleans Saints go off the field jumping up and down as the Steelers drive but do not score and New Orleans will have the ball when we come back. Leading the game 14 to 13 with 10.43 to play. Here's to good friend. Tonight is time. Did Frank burn the trout yet? No, but we're ready. <laughs> okay, you guys, knock it off. I don't believe it. And a little something to go with it. Low and brow. Low and brow. Then you guys don't deserve it, but my trout does. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Well, Frank, we apologize. <laughs> the beer's terrific. <laughs> We're not exactly alike. I'm wearing J.C. Penny plain pocket jeans, and I'm wearing the world's best-selling jeans. My jeans are made of tough, heavy denim with good looks and great styling, and mine have this fancy stitching on the back pocket. But plain pockets only cost you ten dollars. J.C. Penny plain pockets. The big difference between us and them is the pocket and the price. I'll buy lunch. A tennis star who's into another racket. A preacher with some exotic ideas. A cheerful Phyllis George. An earful of Bonnie Franklin and Liza Minnelli. All on People Monday night. Now a replay of Durella's field goal try. There it is up. And whoop, he hits the uprights. Back it goes. Touchback. No field goal, no points. The Saints continue to lead. And they now have the ball back. Let's see what they do here at first down, whether they run to the left. West Chandler is in the ballgame, 89, along with Ike Harris, Chuck Muncie, or whether they throw the football. Robin Cole is now in backing the line as one of the three for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Manning getting that Steeler defense jumpy, going with a long count. Pittsburgh quickly shuts down the New Orleans offense. 
Little or no gain, ball just across the 20-yard line. They really haven't made any yardage, so to speak, of it all, running right at the defense, right up the middle. They made some running to their left, but of course the big weapon has been the forward pass, and they've done that extremely well. New Orleans has been a fourth quarter team, as you see. And outscored their opposition in the fourth quarter. Now Manning brings his team out of the huddle. Wesley Chandler cut that big third down play. Late in the third quarter. Wide to the left. Mike Harris is wide to the right. Galbraith runs on what was a touchdown carry earlier the same play. This time the Steelers fired up on defense, shut it right down. L.C. Greenwood was on the tackle. Minnesota has now gone ahead of Detroit, 17 to 7. So it's third down and nine for New Orleans, and the Steelers conceivably, if they hold here, will get the ball back on a punt in good field position. With much time remaining, 9.35 on the clock running fourth quarter. New Orleans 14, Pittsburgh 13. Extra defensive back in for the Steelers and Tony Dungy. Tony Gabbard is wide open. And he's got it for a first down for New Orleans, and he's all the way out to the 45-yard line. A big, big gainer. 25-yard gain for New Orleans. Tony Galbraith goes inside of the tight end's release and is wide open coming across. There you see him, a linebacker trying to cover him. Can't do it. And uh, Wagner, number 23, finally makes the tackle, but the Saints are out of the trouble area. Have a good opportunity here, first and 10 on the 45-yard line. And here again, Artie, Archie Manning hit the right guy, and the offensive line continue to do a good job. The pass rush for the Pittsburgh Steelers is practically nil. Capitalized 268 yards passing. The Saints leading by one, and now with the drive going at the 45. First and 10. Manning's going to look again. Childs is open. Caught by Henry Childs after it was tipped by Jack Ham. Yes, it was It was a tip ball, Don. You're right. It was a tip ball, but the, the concentration span again of Henry Childs is just terrific. Watch him. He pops open. The ball is de deflected there by Jack Ham, number 59. Watch Jack Ham reach high for the ball, deflects it, just barely tips it, but Henry Childs it still manages to make the reception. First and 10, New Orleans. This is some good football game. We've got 7.50 to play in it. Pitch back goes. Here comes Muncy. Oh, what a lick put on him. L.C. Greenwood. From Arkansas A M N N now in his 10th year, 6'6, 250. He came flying across and really buried Chuck Muncie. Greenwood slow getting up. Henry Childs, five for 80 yards in this game so far, but I keep repeating it, but I mean it sincerely. I don't think there's a finer tight end in professional football than Henry Childs. Well, he's been a great one today. Really all season long. He has uh, 32 receptions on the year for New Orleans. Five today. Second down and eight now for the Saints. Ball of the 35-yard line of Pittsburgh. Saints lead by a point in the fourth quarter. 14-13. Muncie. Shell came up to fill nicely. There was room for Chuck Muncie to go had he eluded Donnie Shell. Yeah, there was a blitz. A blitz that time. Donnie Shell, number 31. It's a straight-ahead shot again. There you see him, 31. 190 hitting the 235, sacrificing his body for love of the game. So we have to have some young men, don't we, Hank? That's right. Red blooded young people who will make those sacrifices. Third down now for New Orleans, third and eight. 35 yard line of Pittsburgh. Good chance for him to hit Ike Harris in an outside pattern again, though. They're running a sweep. And Muncy is upended by Ron Johnson and so. The Steeler defense holds, and it's a very long field goal. I think we're going to see Blanchard come out and try to an angle a punt. Fourth down coming up. They're a little slow sending out the kicking units. They're going to send out. Of course, a field goal, if it ever went the distance, would be a big, big event. Now they're sending Blanchard out. Here comes Mickemeyer. Blanchard's coming also, but he's the holder in this case. Well, we've seen Mickemeyer hit it distance-wise from this far out earlier, but he's a little bit wide. No question he has the range to hit it this far. And, of course, if he should, it would give the Saints a four-point lead. And Steelers would have to score a touchdown to go ahead. 
Right now, New Orleans is leading 14-13. A 50-yard attempt is not going to get there. Not enough steam. So the Steelers will take over what was the line of scrimmage, and that is their 33-yard line. So they have relatively good field position, five and a half minutes to play in the game. That's where they miss a fine kicker like Rich Zaro. Rich has a good, very strong leg and is very effective from that distance. 60 Minutes kicks off television's top Sunday night lineup with more fascinating stories. Then Archie Bunker gets the shock of his life when he finds out who his bedfellow is. More last follow with Alice, then it's the fast-moving drama Kaz, red-hot action of Dallas tonight on CBS. Swing pass to Franco Harris. Reese hit him as hard as he could. And Harris moved right off and moved ahead. Not too much yardage. Jim Merlo finally finished off Franco Harris on the play. Actually, it was it was the outside receiver. You saw Stallworth, the two down. Yeah, it was Stallworth, but it was a quick screen. And the reason the play didn't succeed was the fact that he didn't throw the ball well at all. It was way too low, didn't throw it at the numbers. And if you don't throw it at the numbers, there's no way this play is going to succeed because by the time you get readjusted and get back up and try to make yardage, the defense is there waiting for you. Live action now, second down and eight. Bradshaw guns it and down with the ball as Franco Harris out to the 40-yard line. Still short of a first down. A very big third down now coming up for Pittsburgh. 440 left to play in the game. Steelers with the ball. Third down and four coming up at their 40. Jim Merlo that time, number 57, made a good open field tackle on Franco Harris, number 32. Steelers have had 10 previous third downs, have converted five for first downs. John Starr with wide to the left. Lynn Swan moves out to the right flank. Bradshaw takes the drop. They give him time. Now he throws. It's caught by Randy Grossman for a first down. Grossman still going. He's inside the 40. And Grossman with a big catch. And the subsequent run with the ball has it passed to the 38-yard line of New Orleans. They feel there again. Watch again this time. The, the guy they want to do business on, one-on-one, -on -one, is number 27. There he is. Merle, Merle is out there trying to make a play. But there you see Grossman, number 84, doing a good job on Ray Brown, number 27, who finally made the tackle. 335 to play in the game. Clock running. Saints 14, Steelers 13. First and 10 Steelers. Flyer crashing ahead. He's ahead for eight yards, nine yards. He's down to the 29-yard line. Myers and Brown, the safeties knocked him down. Cleveland leading Houston 7 0. First quarter of play. Ryan Seif with a touchdown run, the Cleveland quarterback. Bradshaw, you see his statistics 15 and 21, 176 yards. Picked off one, threw for one touchdown. Flyer again. Comes off a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, and Derlin Moore finally knocks him down. Alex Price had a shot of him in the backfield, got good contact, but didn't get his arms around the ball carrier. Rocky Blair fought through the arms and through the traffic and made the necessary yardage, made the first down, first and 10, Pittsburgh. I mentioned earlier, these two backs are not going to knock down or stop with just an arm tackle. You've got to really wrap them around there, squeeze them tight, knock them down, or else they're going to make yardage after they, got, after they get hit at the line of scrimmage. The Steelers, a great pressure team, headed to the playoffs for a seventh consecutive year. First and ten, but they trail by one. Here comes Flyer again, puts his head down and drives to the 24. He got three. And time becoming very much a factor now. Two minutes and 30 seconds to play in the clock running. There's another trap play, but they don't get the trap done. It was cross blocking at the, in the middle area. Defense does a good job that time of containing the run. Rocky Blyer, and uh, now is second in about eight. Second and seven to be specific. And Flyer deployed to the left of the blocker. Bradshaw takes a look. He throws. Too much on it. Lynn Swan turning out of the football. It's incomplete. It'll be third down and eight. Another big third down now. The clock is stopped with 1.59 to play, and we'll have a warning given to both benches, advising them of the amount of time to play and a timeout on the field. Clarence Chapman, that time, number 24, really did a good job on the play, and Jim Merlo helped by getting good depth, number 57, that made him throw the ball poorly. 
These are two of today's newest razors. The one on the right is the new Norelco rechargeable rotary razor. This one has two blades and pivots up and down. The new Norelco 36 blades in three adjustable floating heads and a new shaving angle. Both give you a close shave. But the new Norelco rechargeable lets you walk away from soap and water. Of course, they do give you one thing Norelco doesn't. Gotcha. The new Norelco rechargeable rotary razor. Still no gotcha. Announcing a whole new breed of Mustang for 79. The turbocharged Mustang from Ford. With the performance of an optional turbocharged engine that took Mustang from 0 to 50 in an average of 7.1 seconds. Precise handling from sports car features and more. Mustang Turbo in three-door and two-door models. Capture one at your Ford dealer now. I don't know who that is, but he's trying to put something on New Orleans. Right now, the Saints are holding to a 14-13 lead. We have 159 left to play in the game. Dealers with the ball, failing by a point. Big down, third down and seven coming up at the Saints 25. Big rush, Bradshaw gets it away, Blyer has it. Rusty Blyer goes in for a touchdown. The wide receiver screened off a New Orleans defensive back with a perfect block that let Flyer go in. Let's watch it again now. Here is Bradshaw. The rush is heavy. The blitz is on. Hughes was coming. Flyer makes the reception. Now you'll see Starworth get in the way. That is the end of defensive back and into the end zone number 20. Rocky Flyer, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Pittsburgh has the lead 19 to 14. And here's Jarella. Ready to try to point after. 151 left to play in the game. He makes this. It'll be a six-point lead for Pittsburgh. The Saints, if they can come down and score and hit the extra point, could win the game. This could be a game right to the final gun. And here is the extra point up and good. So the Steelers make the big play when they have to make the big play. And they come back to take the lead, coming from behind twice in this game. We'll be back with the Saints getting the ball in a moment. Steelers just went 67 yards in eight plays, three minutes and 42 seconds of the fourth quarter clock elapsed during that drive. Hank Stram has gone down to the field. He'll be talking to some of the victors as the game winds out. We have 151 left to go, and Jarella ready to kick off now for Pittsburgh. Wes Chandler standing in the New Orleans end zone. He's the guy the Saints would like to see get the ball. To either side of them, we have Rich Marty on one side for New Orleans. And also back there for the Saints is Jack Holmes, a big power back, a rookie out of Texas Southern. Running with the ball, Rocky Blyer has gained 85 yards and 18 carries. Catching the ball, he has gained 46 yards in the touchdown you saw from 25 yards out on three carries, on three receptions, three for 46 and a touchdown. Let's see if Jarella may want to drive it deep. Schwartz, a rookie, he's across the 35, and Schwartz gets out to the 42-yard line, and Finley Marcus go down. A very costly clip by the Saints, if that's what the call is. Saints would have had fine field position to start this drive with 145 now remaining, and there is the penalty clipping against New Orleans, so from the 42, they'll be marked back. Let's watch once again the Terry Bradshaw throw to Rocky Blair, resulting in the go-ahead touchdown for Pittsburgh. Drops it out in the flat. Here comes Blair, turning up field. Blair takes it into the end zone, and it's a touchdown, and it is a go-ahead score for Pittsburgh. This is Don Crickey with Hank Stram. We apologize to those of you who are viewing in Miami. 
I hope you're enjoying it. Normally you see the pregame show now. There's been a switch in the switch, so you see a live football game. There's been some football game. We'll be going back to the pregame show in Miami, but right now you're watching the Saints trying to come down the field with 145 left to play. Manning has had a spectacular day. Rolling out, throws the ball. And it is incomplete. He was looking for Tony Galbraith. John Banaszak, big defensive tackle, was on the rush. Hank Stram, I see you down the sideline now. What do the Saints do here as the Steelers are really putting that defensive pressure on? Yeah, they're still putting a lot of pressure on the defense, uh, on the offense, especially at this stage of the game. But uh, they have to maintain a lot of poise and do what they feel they have to do. They have to try to get the ball to Henry Childs, I think, the way they're covering. Let's see what they do on this situation. West Chandler, wide to the right. Wide to the left, Ike Harris. Second down and 10, New Orleans. Pittsburgh 20, New Orleans 14, 138 to play. Swing pass goes to Galbraith. Across the 30 to the 32, Lawrence Hayes, number 51, knocked him down. So that brings up another third down as the Steeler defense has really come alive now. You see the clock running. That is the time remaining in the football game. New Orleans led at the half, 7-3. Later trail, 13-7. Went ahead, 14-13. Now the Steelers have come back a second time to take the lead. 20-14. Manning throws. It is caught for a first down by Ike Harris at the 48-yard line. The Saints still not calling a timeout. 59 seconds left, 57, 56. And now they call a timeout with 55 seconds to play. Hank? You know, the, the key to this game so far, and, and in this particular situation down, is the fact that the Pittsburgh Steelers really have not been able to get a good pass rush on Archie Manning. Computer Society. It's big news everywhere, and now it's in color TV. Computer Color 330, new from Magnavox. Computer Color 330, the all-electronic color system with 25% more lines of resolution. That means a sharper, crisper color picture than ever before possible. Touch, touch tune television with Computer Color 330, new from Magnavox. Americans say inflation is the number one national problem. Well, it's not surprising. We've had serious inflation for years now under both Democratic and Republican presidents. See, inflation is caused by too much government spending. That's why changing presidents doesn't help. You see, Congress is the arm of government responsible for spending, and they've got to be held accountable. Now, there's one thing we haven't tried in more years than you may think, a Republican Congress. This year, give a good hard look at your Republican congressional candidate. It could be your best chance to fight inflation. The drama is building here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. This is Don Crickey with Hank Stram. We have 55 seconds left to play in the game. Archie Manning having one of his most spectacular games as a professional. And the Saints uh, get set to go. Our producer, Bob Rowe, we'd like to thank our director, Jim Stillman, our entire CBS crew, associate producer, Mike Albanese. As we come right down to the final gun, Lou Scanna, Sandy Bell, and John Pumo, Bob Siderman and Romeo Forada. Right now, he's got a lot of football left, even though there's less than a minute left on the clock. Throw complete to Galbraith, but a costly reception as the clock runs, and the Steelers make the knockdown. Lambert was covering perfectly. The result gained only three yards. The Saints go into formation without a huddle. The Saints must score a touchdown to tie the game. An extra point would win it if they can take it into the end zone. The Steelers' defensive backs are playing way back like center fielders now. Prevent defense. Incomplete and a penalty marker down. It looks like that time there's a holding penalty. Let's see what they call. I think they do. Let's listen. Gary Markbright, our referee, ready to give us the signal now. And that's going to set the Saints back and give them second and about 17. With 26 seconds showing on the clock. The Steelers looking to extend their winning mark this season to 9-1. and one. If they get it, it did not come easily against an underdog Saints team. It's Holding, number 68, offense, second down. 
Fred Sturt, the left guard, called for a hole, and so the ball is set back now to the Saints 43-yard line. And New Orleans there has the ball, second down, and about 16 to go for the first down. Saints go with extra defense, uh, Steelers with extra defensive backs. They zone off the whole field. Manning throws. Galbraith can't get to the ball. It's incomplete. Joe Green came in a hard rush against Archie Manning, and the game clock now shows 21 seconds to play. Hank? Get somebody coming back. He's trying to get him. Guess what he can do about right now, Henry, down the sideline is put it up long. Yes, you have to hope for a, some kind of a pass interference or some kind of a tip ball, some kind of a big play to get you in close enough to try to, to get the touchdown and, and win this football game somehow, some way. And this is what it's all about. The field goal, of course, as everybody knows, will not be of any value. And, of course, that's, that's a real asset for the defense to know that you just have to worry about stopping a touchdown play. That is the whole story right there. Steelers 20, St. 14, 21 seconds to play. Manning looks, he's got Childs open. Not enough for the first down, though, as the ball is down to the 46. The Saints call a timeout with 11 seconds left. Jack Lambert again on the tackle. He's played some fine football game. One of the Steelers is down. Looks like L.C. Greenwood might be down. Shake it up. As Archie Manning goes across the way to talk to his head coach, Dick Nolan gets some counsel from the sidelines as the Saints have time for a couple of more plays, and that's about all. You know, Don, the other thing that you have to really uh, give a lot of credit to is the offensive line of the New Orleans Saints. That time, Robert Woods, number 65, the right tackle, Dave LaFari, 64, John Hill, 62, Sturt, 68, and seven, 71, Taylor. They've all done a great job out here this afternoon. We remind you that you'll see the World Middleweight Championship fight live next Saturday here on the CBS Network on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Hugo Coro, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And that's where the fight will be held. We'll defend against Rodrigo Valdez. And you'll also see live from Aqueduct in New York, the Stuyvesant Handicap for Thoroughbreds, the last race for the Great Seattle Slough. That's next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific on the CBS Sports Spectacular. 11 seconds to play in the game. Archie Manning walks back out. He is 20 for 30 throwing the ball. 326 yards and one touchdown. And right now they're still attending to L.C. Greenwood, who is probably the Steelers' most valuable defensive lineman this year. He's had a fine season. Appears to have a leg injury. Six of Manning's completions have gone to the tight end. Childs. Good for 92 yards. L.C. Greenwood still down on the playing field here at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, Don, the other thing that's helped the, the uh, I should say probably hurt the Pittsburgh defense as far as their secondary is concerned is the fact that they can't hit receivers in a line of scrimmage like they used to. They used to do a terrific job of that in containing people and preventing them from getting downfield. With a new rule like it is, they can't do that, and as a result, they don't cover that well, and the key has to be the pass rush, and this afternoon, the pass rush was really nullified by the fine work of the offensive line and a great compliment to those people and also to Dick Stanfield, the fine line coach of the New Orleans Saints. Greenwood walking it off to an ovation here at Pittsburgh. You just have to hope it's not a serious injury. It's been a superb football player for the Steelers for a long time. This is his 10th year. Now we come down right to the final drive of this game. 11 seconds to go. Manning drops on fourth down. He throws. It's good for a first down to Galbraith. Three seconds. And time runs out on the Saints. A great effort as the Steelers come away with one of the tough... No, wait a minute now. We do have still one... The uh, flag is down. That is the call. There's one second left, so we're going to have another play, Hank. Yeah, we got one more shot. One second left in the game, and I'm sure this time Archie will just try to throw the ball into the end zone, get it downfield some way, hoping for a big play to pull this game out that would provide them with the opportunity to win it 21 to 20. Have you ever seen a similar circumstance where a team actually did score this far out? Oh, it's happened several times. The Oakland team has been a remarkable hey, team. Right. They, I don't know how they've done it, how many times they've done it, but they've done it many, many times, and we did it a couple of times in Kansas City. 
Well, they're looking on anxiously here in Pittsburgh as the Steelers standing along the near sideline. Dick Nolan counseling Archie Manning. One last play. One second on the clock. Steelers 20. Saints 14. And what has been a superior effort by New Orleans. They've worked so hard to get this game. They were ahead in the fourth quarter and then the Steelers championship team that they are came right down the field and scored on that great throw from Bradshaw on the run by Rocky Blyer for the catch into the end zone for the go ahead touchdown. Galbraith with five catches Childs with six Harris with four for 75 yards for New Orleans. So here it comes you know that Archie's going to be dropping back cranking it up and letting it rip into the end zone and wouldn't be surprised we see that rookie from Florida. Wes Chandler trying to make an acrobatic leap at it. This is the last play of the game. Harris to the right. Manning drops the throw. He looks. He throws to Chandler. He catches it, but he's caught. And time runs out. The Steelers had three guys back on the goal line, so you weren't going to complete anything into the end zone. They'd hope that perhaps the Saints did that Chandler, if he caught the ball as he did, could break away and maybe run it in a long distance shot. But he did catch the ball, quickly knocked down. So the game ends the final score. The Pittsburgh Steelers beating New Orleans 20 to 14. And quite an ending it was. And I see down below Hank Scram as a very fine quarterback of Terry Bradshaw. He'll be talking to Terry Bradshaw when we return to Free River Stadium in Pittsburgh with the final number up, Pittsburgh 20, Saints 14. It's lightweight. It's portable. It's virtually indestructible. You can hammer on it, saw on it, sand on it, paint on it, drive a screw on it, cut a pipe on it, clean a door on it, fix a picture on it, or a wheelbarrow, or a chair, or a bicycle. You can even have your lunch on it. The incredible Black & Decker workmate. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. Your cooling system was corroded. That'll be $76 for parts and $28 for labor. What? You should have kept your guard up. <laughs> My radiator's steaming. I need a tow. Should have kept your guard up. Ah! When winter hits, keep your guard up. Installed properly, Dow Guard Antifreeze protects against corrosion. And Dow Guard guards your car down to 34 below. Dow Guard Antifreeze. Take it from me. Keep your guard up. This is Don Crickey back at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh where the Steelers have just defeated the New Orleans Saints 20 to 14. And for more on the game, let's go down to Hank Stram. Very happy to have with us after the game, Terry Bradshaw, the winning quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Terry, uh, there was a, a tough, hard-fought football game, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I think it was a heck of a game. Uh, New Orleans offense kept the ball away from us. Maybe that was their strategy, but it, it worked, almost worked perfectly for them. And, we could have got our hands on the ball a little more. I believe we could have, could have scored some more points, but it was exciting. I think the television fans out there really enjoyed it. Well, I think they saw two of the very finest quarterbacks in the National Football League out here today. Terry Bradshaw, of course, the leading passer in the AFC, and Archie Manning, the leading passer in the National Football Conference. You know, one of the things about the game, uh, uh, Terry, was the fact that I was surprised, really, that your defense didn't provide more rush on <laughs> Archie Manning. It was amazing. Uh, you don't know what to attribute that to. I would like to say that it was the Saints. Their offensive line is doing a great job. They've done a great job all year. We knew that Archie was going to get rid of the ball. We tried to blitz him. He hit people on the blitzes for big plays. And when we gave him time, he picked us apart. And uh, what can you say? We needed the ball more because I thought we could run the ball on him. And we did, but we just never, we didn't have the ball on, you know, enough during the game, Hank. Uh, you had to be impressed also, Terry, with... Uh, Henry Childs, the fine tight end of the New Orleans Saints. You know, he doesn't get a lot of recognition and a lot of notoriety, but he's one of the very finest in the business, and I'm sure you felt that he did an excellent job out here today. Oh, he had a great game. You know, another guy doesn't get much recognition is Rocky Blyer, and uh, we finally got the ball to him. He hasn't caught a pass all year, I don't think. And he, uh, he had a great game also. Well, you know, the great thing about Rocky and, of course, Franco both is that I mentioned it several times during the course of the game was the fact that you just don't tackle them unless you get your arms wrapped around them. Several times they were stopped in the backfield and short of making the necessary yardage for first downs, but they invariably fought through the traffic and got the necessary yardage in the first down and some big plays. Well, you know, we've got a great offensive line, Hank, and uh, we've got a big back named Franco that's uh, extremely quick for a big man. We've got a power back in Rocky, and Today we were using combination plays and as you know and we were going in and out on them and gambling with them and guessing with them and 
But these guys are running well. When you give them a little crack, they're going to make a lot of yardage today. They got some pretty doggone good size holes. You know, I, I know that you feel very good about the fact that you're nine and one right now at this stage of the season. Uh, and I wonder what you feel about the comparison. It's hard to make comparisons, uh, this Terry, a, but do you think this is a better team than no, your big years? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think we're playing like it. I think we're playing better offensively. But defensively, uh, right now, we're certainly not. I, know, I think they agree with me. We're just not as strong as we were three years ago. I asked, I asked that question uh, earlier. I, I mentioned that thing during the course of the game because I felt the same way. I just feel you're much better offensively, but not yeah. nearly as good defensively. I, Terry I Bradshaw, agree. thanks very much. Great win for you, and good luck from here on in. Okay, Coach, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now we're going to chat with uh, Dan Rooney, who is the president of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dan, it gets tougher all the time, 9-1, and one, but everybody's shooting for you. They sure are. Uh, we expected this to be a very tough game. Uh, the Saints really are come on, and they're very tough, and uh, we knew that they would run the ball at us, and uh, uh, with Archie Manning, it was a tough game, and as you say, 9-1 and one looks like uh, you're way out in front, and that's what everybody's saying, but it's sure been a struggle getting here. Dan, I know that you don't want to talk about it just yet, and your coach Chuck Knoll doesn't, but your fans certainly want to hear it. Is this team of Super Bowl caliber looking back in comparison to the past two champions? Well, we sure hope so. Uh, of course, our first goal is to get to the playoffs, and uh, as uh, I said earlier, everybody says we're already there, but, uh, you know, that is our first goal, to, to get into the, to win our division, get into the playoffs, and who knows from there. Well, Dan, continued success to you and the Steelers. You've got a great organization. It's a great part of the National Football League. Thanks very much. Dan Rooney, the president of the Pittsburgh Steelers. There is the final number up on the scoreboard here at Three Rivers Stadium. The Steelers winning their ninth game, 20-14 to 14 over the New Orleans Saints. They had to come from behind twice to do it. And now let's go to Brent Musburger at CBS Control in New York. Welcome back to New York now, and a couple of audiences watching earlier games have joined this pregame show. Let's get everybody up to date on the scores right now. Those of you who watched Green Bay and Philadelphia know that the Packers ran into some tough luck in the first half. Eagles hung tough and won the game 10-3, the final there. New Orleans and Pittsburgh and Archie Manning and the Saints drove the Steelers' iron curtain to the wall before finally it was Bradshaw to Rocky Blyer 20 to 14, the Steelers survived today. The Cardinals have dominated the Giants. The Giants have not been in the hunt in this game. It is 20 to three, and Bud Wilkinson about to win for the second straight time. San Francisco had a touchdown pass dropped in the first quarter. Back came Atlanta. So now after beating the Rams on Monday night, they're about to wrap this one up today. Detroit and Minnesota. The Lions played them tough, led at the half, but in the second half, the Bikes and Fran Tarkenden, Tarkenden incidentally had three front teeth knocked out, returned to lead Minnesota to this victory about a minute left. New England and Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills playing the Patriots much tougher than anyone expected. Still time left for them to win it. The Patriots coming off that scoring explosion of a week ago. 28 to 22, the Bears about to lose for the seventh straight time, but hold on. Mike Phipps is in that game. Five minutes and 15 seconds to play, and they are rallying in Soldier Field. Cleveland and Houston, tough defensive game down in the Astrodome. Seven to nothing, the Browns leading. Oakland and Kansas City, seven to three. Kenny Stabler has thrown two more interceptions in that game, giving him 22 for the season. Now, Irv, let's start in on some highlights. Why don't you pick up with the Giants? Okay, and the Giant Cardinal game. The Giants just scored another touchdown. The score now late in the fourth quarter is St. Louis 20. New York 14, but the Cardinals got on the scoreboard early with Jim Hart, a quarterback, going to work right away to his favorite wide receiver, Pat Tilly. Number 83 here makes a nifty grab along the right sideline, takes the ball down in the scoring position before he's finally knocked down. Hart goes to the air again, this time to Al Chandler. Number 87 makes the catch, and St. Louis takes a 7 0 lead in the first quarter. Jim Hart this time in the second quarter just unloads the ball as far as he possibly can. Mel Gray comes down with it, a big bomb, getting the Cardinals out of the hole in the second quarter, allowing Jim Otis, who is now the Cardinals' all-time leading ground gainer, go over for a touchdown. St. Louis 14-0 in the second quarter. A few plays later, we see Jim Otis do it again. St. Louis 20, the Car Giants nothing. And right now, the score with six minutes left to go or so in the game is St. Louis 20, the Giants 14. All right, and... It's 20 to, what was well, that? 20, 20 to 10. 20 to 10. 20 to 10. Okay, the NFL today will continue with more highlights in just a moment. Zonk, if you want a date, get in shape. Shape? On solid steel. Uh-uh. Chic 
shape, Zonk. Chic shape. Get clean, get close, get comfort too. Get your face in chic shape. Click in Chic Super 2, the only twin blades Teflon coated for incredibly comfortable close shaves. Great shape, Zonk. Chic shape. That's Super 2. I see terrible things. My future? Your clothes. You'd look better in Hager slacks. Or a Hager sport coat and slacks. Even a Hager vested suit. All of today's Dacron polyester at prices that won't cost you a fortune. <laughs> now I see a romance. Uh -huh. A beautiful woman. My girlfriend. My daughter. Emotia! Hager, because looking good makes you feel good. <laughs> Go for the gold. The Danish heritage of American brewed two-board gold. Never go for bronze or silver. Live to make the most of every day. Go for the gold. Then taste the triumph of Danish brewing. Two-board gold. You make the most of every day. Go for the gold. Two-board gold. All right, we have some more finals in. Checking the scoreboard. Minnesota wins today over Detroit. 17-7. Time runs out on Buffalo and Chuck Knox. 14-10, but the Bills have been tough against that handicap number this year. Seattle has just kicked a field goal, and that makes it 31-16 right now with about 4 minutes and 30 seconds to go. The Bears are losing in Chicago. Green Bay and Philadelphia in the first half featured a little bit of everything. You know, we've all wondered about David Whitehurst. Is he a quality quarterback? Well, I think he proves it right here. Watch the blitz. Three men converge on 17, dumps it off to Middleton, and this is a 50-yard gain for Bart Starr's Packers. It set up a 43-yard field goal by Chester Markle. Now, Bart will run this play over and over. Whitehurst back. Lofton of Stanford breaks down the sideline. Outlaw can't defend against it. Lofton into the end zone, call it back. Holding on the play against the Packers, no touchdown. Then this play, bat snap McCarron. Beverly panics just a bit, tries to kick it off the artificial turf. And then John Shara, the former UCLA star, the rollout quarterback, comes in to run the Eagles. And watch now on the rollout as he goes on into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Eagles win it 10-3, 31-22. As the Bears had scored again, I gave them credit for only 16, so let me get that score right. And Irv, we've got more highlights. <laughs> you won't believe this stat, Brent. Listen, Archie Manning completed 22 or 32 passes for 344 yards, and the Saints lost. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat him by a score of 20 to 14 because today belongs to this guy right here, number 12, Terry Bradshaw, who goes to number 88, Len Swan, makes a nifty catch and takes the ball down to the 13-yard line. Bradshaw again going to work to his favorite receiver, number 88, touchdown, and Pittsburgh took a 10-7 lead in the third quarter. Archie Manning had a pretty good day throwing the ball. As I said before, number 85, Henry Childs, the guy who latches onto this one, takes the ball down to the 20-yard line, but eventually down to the 5 as he breaks the tackle from the 20. Manning hands the ball off to Galbraith. Galbraith goes the rest of the distance, and the Saints are back in the game in the fourth quarter, trailing at this point 14-13. But, of course, the ball game is put away right here as uh, the Steelers go to Blyer. He goes in, and they wind up winning the ball game 20-14 in a hard-fought contest. All right, we've run out of time for Jane Kennedy, Irv Cross, and Jimmy the Greek. I'm Brent Musburger. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL today on CBS. We'll see you at halftime at the Miami-Dallas and the Tampa Bay-Los Angeles games, and we'll run down all the scores and complete highlights from around the NFL. So long, everybody. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to see and test drive the all-new LTD and Mustang. Light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Firestone, makers of the new steel-belted Radio 721. Ask a friend about Firestone. Stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. The Word. A shocking discovery that claims Jesus survived the crucifixion. They'll do anything to stop the word. Starting Sunday, November 12th, the word. This is CBS.